benefit a few. Corruption is budgeted into our budget cycle. People budget things that they know will not go to the people of Kenya. I will be spending time with our treasury to make sure that with a tooth comb we eliminate anything that will not go to benefit the people of Kenya in our budget. He further called on his government officials, parliament and the judiciary to deal with the nightmare of corruption in the country that had paralyzed various functions. And that is why it is our commitment that we need to enhance the office of the Attorney General, office of the Director of Public Prosecution, office of the uh, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Authority, members of the legislature, friends in the judiciary to work collaboratively, to work together, build synergy, to make sure that we deliver on this plan, knowing very well that all of us are serving the Kenyan people. Chief Justice Martha Kome has defended the judiciary over the new housing levy law, saying the third arm of government was not party to any argument for the implementation of the program. Speaking in Naivasha, Kome said the judiciary is independent and its mandate was to execute its legal duty in regard to the housing levy issue. She highlighted that the judiciary was an independent party in the court case, which had earlier seen implementation of the levy suspended. This follows President William Ruto's remarks that the executive wasn't in agreement with the judiciary on the program. Corruption is budgeted into our budget cycle. People budget things that they know will not go to the people of Kenya. I will be spending time with our treasury to make sure that with a tooth comb we and the Salaries and Remuneration Commission says Kenya is living beyond its means and that the cost of the wage bill is eating into much of the country's revenues beyond the allowed maximum of 35%. SRC Chair Lynn Mengage says the growing appetite and endless hiring by the government risks pushing up the wage bill further, making it difficult to reserve resources for delivery of services and development. With a required wage bill to revenue ratio, we above the recommended 35% target of the PFM Act and Regulations SRC says the wage bill to ordinary revenue ratio has declined from 54.77% in the financial year 2020-2021 to 40.45% in the current financial year. What we are finding today in all levels of government is we are carrying excess staff establishments. They are way above our impost, especially national government and state corporations. Families of the 11 Kenyatta University students who lost their lives in a road accident in Maungu area near Voi town on Monday evening have described the deaths as a big loss, not only to them, but the entire nation. The families who attended a post-mortem examination exercise at the KU refer- sorry, funeral home appealed to the government to help them foot the funeral bills. The results revealed that all the victims died as a result of severe head injuries sustained during the accident. Come on, as a Samia Mucharibin, or Samia Sanduku, now clothing, and then transport to, to the Bunini. Lakin Sasa Kikubali to Naza Itoa, to our own village, to Naza support from that end. It's a fair issue, na ambulance here, Kama Iko, then Alazo Kule, then from there we take over. He is one of the jovial sons that we have in our family and somebody who is fairly open and uh, a good person whom you can discuss everything without looking of his age. That's the news wire. I'm Lea Obaka. Spice FM, Kisumu. The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. Thank you very much, Eric, and it's good to be at the Situation Room. Always a pleasure coming here. This is the most challenging uh, interview panel in Kenya. You guys are very well informed. And as you can see, Charles, today, very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> to be poor in this country is the greatest sin you can commit, not just from a legal perspective, but from life generally. Yeah. Uh, it, it is very, very skewed. 
We've just had you know, on the floor of parliament, just most recently, a leader within the ODM saying that Sisi Nimombe is a baba. Yeah. Which means that you are willing to be milked dry. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot force me to believe. I'll give away. If it's a land that I'm told to return to you, I will. Okay? Because the court has said so. But I'll continue saying, how oh, to am <laughs> <laughs> That's all that I'm doing. Revenge is for children. Mm. It's for kids. When you grow up, you realize the best revenge you, you can take on somebody is to ignore them. Now I'm just naming politics. Mm. It is not everybody's cup of tea. That's why some people come in one time and that's it for them. Political parties in this country do not have ideologies, whether luring or otherwise. And that is the effect of corruption. Any time an offense occurs anywhere in the country, it is the job of the Inspector General to look into it. Whether it's corruption, whether it's murder, whether it's petty, that is his job. If we have chosen to be a corrupt nation, then we produce corrupt leaders. Everything then becomes chaotic that you cannot be able to change a nation. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. If a land shows you its teeth, it doesn't mean it likes you. <laughs> it doesn't mean it likes you. Mm. It won't start. <laughs> <laughs> a liar calls as witness one who is either dead or far away. Say it now. Below, you know this uh, character called a liar. He has disturbed people. Mm -hmm. So when you tell him uh, who are your witnesses, he will take you to a place where it is difficult to verify. For someone like me who sweats uh, a lot, <laughs> I cannot survive there. <laughs> you know, sweating is biblical. <laughs> and he must blame it on Adam, not me. You know, because Adam messed up and, uh, and, and he was told, now you fellow, you, by the sweat of your brow, oh, yes. <laughs> thou shalt eat. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating morning, insights about Friday. the state so of the nation. where you are today, looking in on the streets and a little bit of movement here and there, but it's probably not going to get too crazy today. Traffic coming off the Thicker Superhighway is not an issue. We'll not see a mess there. Um, as you're coming then into the CBD, if you're coming off of Kambu Road, you're fine, at least for now. And also on Outer Ring, not much in terms of traffic. A little bit of movement coming out of Westlands and so all of that moving into tandem seems that we'll have a busy friday morning but it will not be crazy we're going to keep an eye on things this morning as we get through it let's talk on spice fm ke on x hashtag the situation room This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start it's your Friday. day. It's Friday. It's a it's Friday. It's the 22nd of March, and here we are at nine minutes after six o'clock saying good morning to you and welcome to Friday's uh, edition of Kenya's Biggest Conversation. How are you doing this morning? I hope all is well with you, getting into it as we start our conversations for the day. A lot happening here and there, and we're just very happy that you're here with us this morning as we get into it today. All right, so we're getting into a number of things that we have to do, a um, number of things that we need to talk about. So let me tell you what that is as we get into it this morning. Yes, at 7 a.m. we'll be looking at the evolution of retirement planning. What can you do 
um, to navigate the challenges and embrace innovation when it comes to retirement planning. That conversation we will have at 7 o'clock with Angela Aviambo. And then, remember the Lasha Awards? They're coming through once again. How do you reel in money from the business of film? Timothy Odhiambo Owase will be with us here at 8 o'clock. He's the CEO of the Kenya Film Commission, and we'll be looking into that at 8. And then it is Friday, so it's Healthy Friday. Isaac Kasioka will be with us here. He's the founder and chairman of the Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation. And we're looking at um, raising awareness around multiple sclerosis, what that is, how it affects us, how we can mitigate. Those are the conversations lined up this morning. Um, on Kenya's biggest conversation. Thanks already for being here with us. Eric, my man, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fit sauna. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Very good. Yes, please. You're keeping well? I'm trying. Had a good day yesterday? I did. It's important. Isn't it, though? Mm. Mm. It's important to always have a good day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you're thankful and grateful. Yes. For each new day. Indeed. For his masses. Endureth forever. Endureth forever. Okay, so uh, live streams are up. Yes, they are. Edna, have we sorted out the online radio story? Not yet. It's still work in progress. Okay, it's still in the inbox of the technical team that they're sorting out the online streams, the radio streams. Once that is up, let us know if what yours is catching on. Then let us take a look at the weather forecast so that then we can say hello to everybody who's online. Did you say you're fine? Yes. Okay. You asked me. I did. Yeah. Just making sure, you know. Mm. Mm. Did you? Did I ask you? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay, good. I'm just making sure. <laughs> 12 minutes after 6. Good morning. Welcome to Friday, 22nd of March. If you're online, you know what to do. If you're new here online, Karibu Sana. We appreciate our online community following us on Facebook and on YouTube where we live stream every day we'll start by saying hello to those on you on facebook so if you're on facebook go to the comment section chop chop and say where you're locked in from after undu gives us the weather forecast we will be with you shortly this is the situation room the only way to start your day. It's cloudy in Nairobi this morning at 16 degrees. We'll see highs of 28 and highs of 31 in a partly cloudy in Nakuru at 16. It's 14 and cloudy in Nyeri with highs of 30, 30 and we'll see lows of 14 while it's clear in Eldoret at 12 going to highs of 29. Clear conditions at 27 in Mombasa with highs of 33 and lows of 26 while Malindi is partly cloudy at 27 with highs of 33. Kisumu's clear at 20 with highs of 32 and we'll see highs of 34 in a clear Kaka Mega currently at 18. We're looking into a mostly clear Kampala at 20 with highs of 30 and coming down to lows of 20. While in Dar es Salaam it's clear at 25 with highs of 32. Johannesburg is mostly cloudy this morning at 15 with highs of 24. And Mogadishu partly sunny at 27 will go to highs of 33. It's partly cloudy at 14 in Addis Ababa with highs of 27. And Lagos is cloudy at 27 going to highs of 33. Kinshasa is cloudy at 25 with highs of 30. And we're looking into a 17 and sunny Beijing Friday afternoon going to highs of 22. Paris is cloudy at 9 with highs of 17. While London is cloudy at 10 going to highs of 12. It's one degree and clear in New York Thursday night with aerial flooding in the forecast. We'll see highs of 6 and lows of minus 3. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice yeah. FM. Amos Freeman, it's been a minute, and you say Kimi Lili is locked in. Long time, the lost son is back. Which one? You now. Mm. Exactly, I thought so. It's mm. been a minute since we've been with us. And Sammy Dunda says, good morning, following from Kobujoy. Wow. Kobujoy. Kobujoy in Nandi County. Allah. Imagine. I like the sign of these places. I want to go. Wanna uh -huh. go. Following... Katika Kisi County, Kiambu, that's Eric Osoro. And um, have a nice weekend, guys, says... Eh, he has disappeared. Allah? Okay, everybody's here, man. Says Roy Dennis. Laban and Yandieka is tuned in this morning. And Samuel says, as usual, I'm locked in from game. L Luri. Massive in Siaya County. Uh -huh. Dr. Joe says, good morning. New member from Bungoma. 
karibu karibu member uh -huh. new person getting you loud and clear thank you so much for being here George Mashuk is tuned in from Kasarani mm. and uh, Pauline Shiro says have a great day Ndusiti and Eric and the entire listenership of Spice there you are spreading love and things this mm -hmm. great this morning following the show from Miruka says Elias Tumbo and uh, Jeffrey Wanyonyi is tuned in and says the best conversation and voices as beautiful as always tuned in from Namoru in Lodwa Okay. Good morning, good people. Tune in from Mugura. That's Nam's way. <laughs> Edwin Gashanga is tuned in from Nyeri. And Collins Kipsat says, it's Friday. Have a good one. So good to have you guys in the room this morning. Okay. Who else is here this morning? What do you Wengi. Nakwambia, Joe Mungai, talking about the medics, is here. Mugivi Reloaded. Really? Uh -huh. Is an early bird. Jimmy Gakio says, good morning, Team Spice. Alfred Katea as, pres Katea, rather, as president, with Jibi Wajigi as vice president, says Deep State. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Who as president? Vibes Radio. So now you're grooving. <laughs> you're going to the beach. Hey, what well, are vibes, Buana? <laughs> you guys have been cities. Uh, <laughs> so what was the song? Something mercy, mercy, mercy. Something of that sort. Oh Lord, I'm mercy, mercy, mercy. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Did it? Did it? Did it? It's Imeisha. I'm a bado. Bado in Andalea? Yeah. In Andalea? You're a bit in Zuri. You got tops, huh? Yeah, it's very good. Okay. In Andalea? In Andalea. Hey, CT. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. You mean it? It's okay. I think I'm in the bottom. In the red. Evans and Tabo is tuning in this morning. Studio 3. Uh, we are playing the thing. CT, you can keep dancing because Eric is trying to hold you. Uh -huh. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> hey, hey, it's over. See, we go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Koisha story. Where we finished? Huh? You are over. You it are is done. finished. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. My Man. morning has been made for the next one week. <laughs> Ricardo Marietta is tuned in, kings and queens from Kitengela. Good morning, good people. San Francisco is locked. That's Jacinta Wamboy. And Deep State says, please, please, what? Robinson Kisero is tuned in. I salute the clear mind of Alfred Kater. Allah. Mm. Tell CT to do like that. He just did. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Princess Ndu. Well, good morning. Mm. CT and Eric, social media is our mirror today. We can't ban or restrict it because huh? eh, we've gone deep. JB Mutua says, good morning. Happy Friday, Spice family. Um, Agri Momani is tuned in this morning. Sir George is also tuned in this morning. Happy Friday and looking forward to a great show. Amayo Keo is also tuned in. Good morning, team. Eva Nzlangat says, good morning, team. Kubwa Desmond is here. John Jokahato, Josfat Moirori. Jane Kanairo says, good morning, Ndu. Well, good morning, Jane. How are you? George Okoff says, good morning, my peeps. Warm, not cold, warm greetings to Eric, CT, Ndu, Edna, Yego. The housing tax is all about 2027. Okay, Nisal. Precious Gondi says good morning. Robert and Boko is also tuned in. Jimmy Gakio says good morning. Um, and you say many other things, but we'll go with good morning. Yes. Uh, Team Spice, good morning, says Onganyi Malala. Yes, 9.45. So there's this phenomenon called the sun outage, which uh, we're currently going through. Yeah. That means at about quarter to ten every day, it's the signal of the satellite that then is blocked. So you will not then be able to um, um, hear, hear us. us. And that is for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's because of the changing of the seasons. Happens every now and then. This is one of those times. But it's not going to last forever. Sawa. Okay? Yeah, Wiki yeah. Aaron's is here. Ivan Omondi. Everybody's online. If I didn't say you, it didn't mean I didn't see you. I've seen you. Everybody's here. Karibuni sana. City. Mm -hmm. Lord of mercy. Yes, he already has had mercy. Okay. Is there something in particular you would like him to extend his message to? Yes, to you. Okay. So you can give us the proverb. That is something that I will do. Uh-huh. Happily so. Uh-huh. 
and this is the final week yeah. and day yeah. of our proverbs yeah. from the Republic of Burundi. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a proverb you're supposed to give us. You'll you will give us in the second hour. You know, you, my man, mm -hmm. are a magician. That is exactly what is on my mind. Okay. Yes. Aye. But let me give you the day's proverb from Burundi. Mm -hmm. In the second hour, mm -hmm. there's yet another proverb mm -hmm. that one of our keen listeners mm -hmm. actually sent to me. So I will mention it. It is worth mentioning. Okay. Especially on a Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Simple, straightforward proverb for Friday. Yeah. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Without effort, no harvest will be abandoned. Uh, no, abundant. Oh. Not abandoned. Eh. Abundant. <laughs> okay. Without effort, no no harvest will be abundant. Yes. Sawa. So? Get it. Get it, eh? Get it, get it. Okay. Get Headlines, Padali. Good morning. On the front page of the Standard today, pain points for striking doctors as Ruto steps in. Ruto being the his excellency the president mm. of the republic of kenya mm. it needed to happen for some kind of movement we'll talk about that striking workers were last night watching keenly as the government went on overdrive to try and resolve a stalemate that has kept the medics away from their workplaces leading to suffering of patients with president ruto sending the head of public service mm. felix koske to personally intervene mm. uh, that could say many things but we'll look into the details of that other headlines that we're seeing kisiangani sued for denying free media state ads so he's been, you know, pulled into court. Lots of things going on there. Mm -hmm. The CJ, the uh, Chief Justice, Martha Comey, says there was no deal on the housing levy when we had a conversation at State House. I don't know where that came from. Mm. has nothing to do with us. Okay. Make or break in dash for 7% growth by 2028. Kenya's economy is expected to pick up pace and grow by 7.2% by 2028, according to a new government development plan that plugs into country's Vision 2030 blueprint. Okay. Um, bank shells out 8 billion shillings in dividends. It's dividend season. <laughs> um, and everybody's saying lunch, lunch. Apart lunch. from KCB. Apart from KCB. <laughs> Who was saying says, no, no lunch. lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Why fasting is the most unique form of worship. Um, it's interesting because the two major religions right now, at least in some practice, mm. are going through some form of fasting. Mm. Um, and some have also come out of it in January. Mm. Um, Lent season and also Ramadan going on right now. Mm. And so that's an interesting uh, insert today. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have because, you know, the rest of the papers are making their way to reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Safsana, I've got the Nairobian. Mm. It's Friday. It's the Nairobian day. The big headline in the Nairobian is about the late marathon Akip Tum. My steamy love affair with Kip Tum. The mother of one lived with a marathoner under one roof until it became a big issue when her parents discovered that they were cohabiting. The discovery resulted into a meeting between both parents. Edna claims the relations started when she was still in school. Oh, sorry, I had to do a double take. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Edna, what? <laughs> yeah, it's Edna. Had to be an Edna. Isn't it? <laughs> Baby Mama recalls TV steamy love affair with marathoner, the late Kip Tum. <laughs> <laughs> right. Other headline in the paper: How Mombasa drug baron was stopped by a single bullet. And this is a guy called Candy Rain. Uh, that was the name of uh, this guy. Close to three decades, drug lord Swale Yusuf Ahmed <laughs> easily wriggled out his way to freedom. Wiggled out his way to freedom whenever caught on the wrong side of the law. But whenever he secured his freedom, he was still a marked man. And ten days ago. A single bullet from the back of the head stopped him in his tracks. So there's that story. Um, the other headlines. Shame of city roads without bus stops. It's been given some extensive coverage in Nairobi and pages 14 and 15. They're looking at all these roads within the city that are just made for vehicles. Anybody else, like you're a pedestrian, Sharia. you are a commuter, so you need a bus stop, nothing. There are no bus stops in this city. And um, then there's a story on page five of the Nairobian as well, which talks about an estranged woman who wants a former mayor to pay up for love and food. Kakamega woman wants an embattled former mayor to pay her for the last 14 years that she says they have cohabited and for feeding him when he lost two elections before dumping her to his first two wives 
after securing a new job. Okay. Elena Kanira claims she embarked on her marital journey over a decade ago with Job Sichele, a former Kakamega mayor, when they met in 2009. However, the 37-year-old now wants Sichele, who's in his 50s, to pay her for feeding him for the last 14 years. After the man lost his job in the wake of devolution in 2013 and his two futile attempts to win an elective post. We met when he was the mayor. I was just a young girl from the college. He had money by then. But when devolution came, he lost his job as a mayor. And in 2013 and 2017, he vied for elective post and lost. Since then, I've been the breadwinner until 2022. In 2022, he refused to continue providing. She refused to continue to providing for the man after he got a job at Lurambi CDF offices. Mm. Cases in court. Saying, Nimekulisha Puan. 14 years. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Lipa. Ah, my friend. <laughs> Lipa. Mm. There are many interesting stories in the Nairobi today. I'll I'm give sure you we'll some, look at some them of them. Today. Yes, yes. Nice. City, mm -hmm. you don't have the sub, do you? No, but guess what I have? Ah. <laughs> Last week's the Nairobi. <laughs> East African. It's this week's. Okay. <laughs> mm. It ends today. Okay. Mm. So it's still ready. A new one has come out today. Or when is it coming out? Comes tomorrow. On tomorrow. On yeah. Ah, yeah. But so, today mm. is last day for, you know, it's one week. Mm. Yeah, it was from 16th to 22nd. Of okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what do I mean to tell you? Ah. Not really see the papers. So, so there are very many stories. <laughs> right? Let me choose one. Huh? Yeah. Kagame to his party. Give me a successor. I'd mentioned this one, remember? You mentioned it on Monday. Yes, I you see people who remember mm. Eric. You clearly don't remember anyway. No, the that story. Wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> the story uh. that caught my attention uh. is do you know what the eighth wonder of the world is? Or the place that is me. Oh sorry. Huh? Yes. There's an eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> 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 Look. <laughs> eighth wonder of the world. If we leave you aside, okay. Uh, okay. What do you know? Or what do you think has been dubbed the eighth wonder of the world? Who dubs them? See, the people who do these things, they decide first wonder, like the wildebeest migration uh, is a wonder. There's another one. It's called the Ngorogoro crater. I was going to say, it's a mountain or something. Yeah, mm. yeah I'd heard. Yes. But has it been officially classified as such? Or is it people who, like the way we do with the Masai Mara, calling ourselves the Masai Mara? I honestly do not know. Uh -huh. Okay. But I know it was awarded the 2023 best of the tourism destination. Mm -hmm. okay. The Gorongoro Crater. Yes, it is actually a conservation area. Mm. Uh, it's a blend of 8,292 square kilometers. Mm. That is a lot of land. Mm. Okay? The biodiversity, animals, plants, mm. flora, mm. fauna. fauna. Mm. Eh? Mm. Where is it? Tanzania. Mm -hmm. But the thing that attracts people mm -hmm. beyond anything else is the Olduvai Gorge. Mm -hmm. Now, Olduvai Gorge mm -hmm. is a well known archaeological site mm -hmm. and considered one of the most important prehistoric sites in the world. And they say it was provided crucial evidence to human evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cradle of mankind, as it is called. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is this story important? Well, because the story is being told about it and it's a two page spread telling us about the Ngorongoro. <laughs> okay. Yes, now. Why? Mm -hmm. We have wonderful, 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 wonderful sites. Uh, Do we ever see anyone in this country, those in the media, mm. giving a two-page spread just to tell the story of the wonders that we have? Yes. Often. Like when was the last time you saw one? It happens quite often. If it's often, then you should remember. When was the last time you saw one? Oh, hmm? my God. I know, because I know some of those writers, like Peter Moirori, who writes for The Standard, who writes quite a bit about very interesting places in this country. Um, a guy called... Uh, Let me help you. If, you. if you look at the mm. Business Daily, mm. there are pages that are dedicated specifically mm. to places you can go to, mm places to eat, mm. remarkable places. Mm. And then you'll find programs even on KTN mm. that deal with these wonderful places. But yeah. my reference here was mm. all these many places that we have, mm. it doesn't have to be a two-page spread, mm. but a one-page spread. Mm. Or give me real stories, a one-page spread with pictures and everything. Because this one, there are more mm. pictures than there are words. They do. Yes. And that's what I'm saying, City. They do. And I'm saying, mm. I don't see them. That's a problem. The problem is you don't see them.
The problem is they're not often. Mm, you don't see them. No. <laughs> the Msafiri magazine of Kenya Airways. Eric. The standard Eric. talks about these places. Eric. Thorn Mooli is the other guy I was Eric. thinking about. Eric. Msafiri, how often is it published? Uh, monthly, but it's available Precisely. to a certain audience. Uh, the standard is available to a certain audience. Have you seen stories about uh, Turkana and places? There, and there are shows as well, like you've said. Weekly shows, 30 minutes long, about travel. I Where people them. go to places. I see them. Oh, so I see do. them. But are they frequent? Yes. Weekly. Is weekly frequent? Mm -hmm. You know, this coming week, <laughs> you and I, uh, as we come through the papers, yeah. we're going to count. Bus. Okay. In fact, I'll be the referee. Yes, we are going to count. Yeah. And we're going Which to see how we frequent. Doing? Which day and are we doing? all three papers. No, Monday to Friday. So mm -hmm. that we see how so. frequent these things are. I said okay. weekly TV show. I'll count TV, we'll count the papers, we'll just look at the frequency. So okay. Right. Yes. Then, the, it's then we'll also it, look it's at more the, than one program. We'll also look at the East African. When is the last time you saw a spread like that on the East African talking about a place? Because you're trying to use that as reference. I am using it. As, not I'm trying. I actually, I'm using it as reference. Okay. So yes. how often does the East African feature places in Africa? In no, no, Africa? no, 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 no. It's usually East Africa. Yeah, in yes. East Africa. How, how, how often? I don't know. Yeah. I've actually never counted. <laughs> quite a bit i'm there just fascinated by what recently, i've seen recently there yes. was a story about um uh this place in in uganda it's a park in uganda yes i forget the name it was formerly known as elizabeth park what is it called now i'm trying to remember what it is called now where there is the know. nile passes yes, and know there's this rapids uh, yes, and the yes. fastest part of it for you just yeah. now mm. Mm. yes it was recent it was just yes it was very recent a couple of weeks ago, actually. It was very recent. And it's not the only time that they featured mm. uh, remarkable parks in Uganda. Mm. You know, the point, you've gotten the point I'm trying to make, haven't you? No, I haven't. The point I'm trying to make is this. Huh? <laughs> Whenever these things feature, <laughs> we must talk about them a little more. Okay. So that people know. Okay. Yes. I agree. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. What's the headline of the, the East African? The East African, the, the headline is the Kagame succession. And then there was one about a gentleman called Mathuki. Uh, who has been the CEO and the battles that he's having. Mm -hmm. And then there's a story of the people's president. Apparently, Uganda also has one. Uh -huh. I don't remember the name of Bobby Wine. There's mm -hmm. a film that uh, has been produced about him. Okay. And then Kenya gets headroom for more IFM cash, uh, defending the indefensible, the opinion column, money. Actually, Yala seeks skies for ease of travel and trade. Yes, they're usually East African stories. Yeah. Nothing remarkable. Yeah. And that's why the Ngorogoro story caught my attention. Because mm. of all these stories... This one stands out. Yeah, for me, it stands out. Mm. It's an yes. interesting story. Yes. Something different mm. yes. from the usual <coughs> politics. Kazinga. Mm. Kazinga? National Park. Ah. Uh, it's not the name that comes to mind. Okay. It's that's another one. But that tells oh, you that there are very many national parks that are beautiful in that part of the country. True. Mm. There's yes. a lot that's unseen, actually. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 27 minutes to 7. Tell us about traffic and then we'll look at these stories in detail. Sasawa. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start We're getting into day. Friday. It doesn't look like it's going to be too crazy. Let's take a look at what's coming off the thicker superhighway. As you come past Utali and then over the drift, there's traffic there and it's going to go very slowly as you're getting into the CBD. There's inbound traffic coming in on Kiambu Road and what to watch if that becomes more than one lane. But for now, it's manageable and you should be able to do that without too much of a sneeze and a headache. Okay? All right. As you're coming off Ngong Road, not much traffic. Actually, no traffic at all. People are getting in through and through. No problem. On James Gishiro coming in f all the way from Riara Road and then out towards Waiaki Way, spilling over towards um, the Red Hill Link Road. Nothing happening. You can move without a hold up, you're fine. Uh, granted, it's still really early, so let's see what happens. On Jogo Road, we're already seeing a buildup of traffic. Outer Ring looks pretty good, so you can get in, off, out, however, inside the Thika Super Highway from Outer Ring without a problem. Sindio. Okay, let's talk, guys, through the morning. Spice FM KE on X, hashtag the Situation Room. 102.5 Spice FM, Kisumu. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 
Spice. Okay, so doctors are striking. <laughs> we know this. And things started to get elephant yesterday. So the chief executive of the country said, hold up, guys. Let's can we just recalibrate what's going on here? Yeah. So it was getting into evening. Things had gone into day six. We're getting into day seven. And he said, absolutely not. This cannot go on like this. And he sent the head of public service, Felix Koske, to personally intervene. This story is carried on page two and three. Mm. Um, and so what happened? So what they're calling it is a flicker of light at the end of the dark tunnel that has built around public hospitals um, showing... So this flicker of light was showing a bit faintly yesterday after President William Ruto stepped in to ease the doctor strike. Mm. Before the statement by the head of public service at KICC yesterday, sources said the president had called for a meeting at State House with an express intent to end the stalemate. Delivering President William Ruto's message, um, Felix Koske said the government will ensure the dispute is revo resolved amicably. Mm -hmm. He said, and I quote, I assure you of government commitment to this process and the head of state and government has expressed his desire for a comprehensive solution to the current dispute. He added, for example, President William Ruto has demonstrated that there are more positive outcomes that can be achieved through dialogue. There had been dialogue between the executive and the judiciary to ensure the government works to deliver the people of Kenya. Mm. You see, that has happened before. We can do it again. Yeah. Sources also said that the president had met Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nakumicha at State House in an attempt to defuse the stalemate. Basically said, hey, sister, what's going on? <laughs> also at the meeting Thursday morning were Koske and senior government officials. According to the source, CS Nakumicha was expected to issue letters to clinical officers and interns at Afya House, but she never showed up because she was having a meeting with who? The president. Mm -hmm. It continues. Um... <clears throat> At the same time, the president, Nahumicha, was set to issue letters of internship, but this didn't happen. She, uh, Koske then showed up at KICC with a letter to deliver Ruto's message. Mm -hmm. The KICC meeting brought together various stakeholders to find a lasting solution to the stalemate that had paralyzed health care services around the country following the doctor's strike. Now, talks were ordered by the Employment and Labor Relations Court to respective ministries. According to court orders dated March 15th, respective ministries were directed to seek and comprehensively address all grievances leading to the doctor's strike. They include Cabinet Secretary for Labor and Social Protection, Salaries and Remuneration Commission, and the Public Service Commission. Now, um, Koske admitted to stakeholders that the doctor's strike, which had entered into its second week, has affected healthcare. We know this. He acknowledged the role played by doctors, saying that they were key in fighting the pandemic and they cannot be ignored after serving the nation diligently. Mm. He said the court directed us to engage in dialogue and find a solution and that's why we're here this morning he pleaded with the union leadership to come to the negotiation table with optimism and an open mind every day that this strike persists he said harm is being done to our fellow citizens by heeding to this call of dialogue the union has demonstrated its commitment to do no harm so he saw it and said okay guys they're here let's talk or uh her -huh. The strike, he said, had caused harm. It also brought unprecedented collection of stakeholders across from various ministries, um, government institutions, etc., etc. They talked about the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, and he said it's committed to find a quick and suitable solution to the current impasse and to actualize universal health coverage. He said he encouraged all parties to work together in good faith eh. and address the underlying issues. But I don't see that anything happened beyond this encouragement and inspiration. So this was an opening of talks. Yes, it would of. be like, okay, so guys, let's come to the table, but this is what you ought to come with so that we can find a solution. So okay. as we speak, the strike is still on, mm. but now it's as though talks have been initiated. So is this as a result of the court order, because the Employment and Labor Relations Court ordered stakeholders to meet? Yes. Or is it as a result of the president's action? I think it's a hybrid. That uh, the court said, look, we need to have a conversation, but at the same time, president mm. saying, you guys... Both sides are very important here, and mm. we cannot get rid of the importance of doctors in this country. Mm. But we're go if we're, we're going to have a conversation, I'm urging everybody to realize the importance of these doctors mm. and the, the very strong contribution that they make. However, I'm also urging the unions to come with an open mind before we start to have this conversation. And so now this is why it's being called a light flicker of hope at the end of the dark tunnel. Did this matter need to have gotten this far? No. In my opinion, what needed to have happened 
is that you needed to abide by the tenets of the CBA, which you agreed to, number one. Number two, the thing which you instituted as a ministry to say that you're going to hire interns and then post them, you needed to do, period. You just needed to do what you were going to do, if you ask me. So all this talking we're doing, it's because you didn't do what you said you were going to do. Uh, what does it say when every time you have a crisis, the president has to intervene? Yeah, and the person that he's put uh, at the helm of the ministry to do one, two, three, you got to ask. Also, what is the prime cabinet secretary supposed to be doing? In That's my question. Coordinating, nini, nini, coordinating nini. these guys. Assisting the president and the deputy to coordinate ministries. Mm. That, yes. mm. That's precisely it. Prime cabinet secretary, Musalim Davadi, he's in the country. He was. He had a public lecture at the USIU yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you know he's doing the foreign affairs duties. No. He's supposed to coordinate ministries. Is mm. he not? Mm. Is he not? Mm. Okay, so. Mm. Something like, something of the sort. But seriously speaking, you have to ask yourself, again, also, the person who sits at the helm of the Ministry of Health, mm. if it's going to take an, a higher intervention to mm. at least people have, have people at the table, you've got to ask a few questions, don't you? Enough for even issuing of uh, of letters. I mean, the letters were not issued because the CS has gone to state house. Yeah. I mean, surely. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all this drama was, was all this drama necessary. Storm in a teacup, man. Uh, mm. uh, something that is budgeted for, something that you know happens every year and has been happening for the last sixty years. Instituted mm. by you. Yes. Yeah. And then suddenly, this thing has suddenly become a, a complete hoo ha. Yeah. How? And it's who had it before? Yes. Yeah. And then there are promises upon promises upon promises. Mm. Tomorrow, the day after. That's mm. my problem. That actually right there is my issue. Mm. We will do. We will do. We will do. We will not do. Mm. That's my problem. Mm. And then you end up breaking your promise time and time again. That's why people go on strike for nothing else. But that's you know, the, every time doctors go on strike, we keep talking about it and we say people die. It's as though it's harvesting season and people who planted maize are going to harvest maize. Yeah. There is no human life that is not without value. And needless deaths, needless harm, things that could have been avoided, absolutely avoided, completely avoided. Anyway. This story, there's an in-depth feature in the Nairobian today. Shame of city roads without bus stops left for passengers. It says daily it's, a com it's common for passengers to board or alight from anywhere along the road, a practice that not only endangers lives, but also contributes to public transport chaos and confusion. Uh, Matatus drop and pick travelers from any spot at the sight of human presence. It doesn't matter whether the place is a black spot, a steep bend, close to an exit, entrance, intersection, bridge, roundabout. I see Ikomutu. Otaku Shuka, Kupanda, Smama. Bus stops should not be located immediately in advance of an intersection because of the restriction of sight distance that this would impose on drivers approaching the intersection. This is according to the August 2023 Road Design Manual by the Ministry of Roads and Transport. Further, the bus stops should not be too far away because many passengers want access to the roads forming the intersection. Ideally, the bus stop should, except near roundabouts, be located after the intersection, but no more than 50 meters from it. In an ideal situation, bus stops in a big city should exist after a specific distance. It could be after every 400 meters or a kilometer, depending on the class of the road. But this is not the case along Jogo Road, Juja Road, Lungalunga Road, Magadi Road, Kangundo Road, Nem Road, Road, among many others. And there are no standards designated stages for boarding or alighting. The situation is not better along the Mombasa Road, Thika Superhighway, Ngong Road, Wayaki Way, Outer Ring Road, where Matatu crews are notorious for peaking and dropping passengers along the carriage instead of the service lanes. Mombasa Road does not have service lanes. <laughs> Wayaki Way does not have service lanes. Only Outer Ring and Super and Thika Superhighway have some form of, even Outer Ring doesn't have service lanes. Well, Further, worse is the fact that the few bus stops that were designated several years back are in a state of disrepair, having been neglected. Signposts, onge, shelters and ledges that exist have either worn out or have been vandalized, adding to the misery of commuters who have no choice but to board or alight from anywhere. They tell a story of one gentleman uh, called Joseph Angote, who is a resident of Huruma, 
who says uh, uh, Mimi bus stop no because I had an, a nauseating encounter early in the morning one day when activities were here to pick up Angote walked to one of the bus stops along Juja Road where he thought it was safe to wait for a matatu hardly had the 42 year old man calmed at the stage when his nostrils were hit with a stench he checked around he discovered he had stepped on human feces oh. I went back to the house. My day have been, been ruined. From that day, I made a decision of not using designated bus stops because they are not safe, they are not attractive. City planner Mwirori Mairura Omwenga is attributing the sad state of affairs to pervasive indiscipline in a society that is not accustomed to the rule of law. We lack discipline, he says, while our enforcement is wanting. And this indiscipline is displayed by senior government officials whom we often witness being driven or driving on the wrong side. When do you expect ordinary, what do you expect from ordinary citizens when those in key positions lead in breaking the law? He asks. And this is the same thing that's said by the Matatu Owners uh, Association. So, I mean, the issue of bus stops, some of those things that are just basic, bus stops, Pedestrian walkways, pedestrian walkways yeah. foot bridges, bicycle lanes, bicycle lanes. Yani, it's an idea in somebody's head. A suggestion somewhere that perhaps, maybe, yeah, we can think about it. Yeah. Did you know mm. that there is an annual United Nations sponsored happiness report? Oh yeah, that came out just the other day, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And you know what it said? What does it say? Well, it says mm. Kenya are among the, the most unhappy people in the planet. Oh my God. But don't worry, the people who are who who unhappy. Who are unhappier. Do not worry. Okay. We are not the most unhappy. The how others were how unhappy. do they gauge our level of happiness? Well, there's the annual. Let me just read it so yeah. that I'm not ad-libbing or adding my own things as I'm, I'm, I'm usually given to doing. Yeah. Uh, the annual United Nations sponsored by the, this is an article in the People Daily. Uh -huh. Okay? Mm -hmm. The annual United Nations Sponsored Happiness Report rated Finland as the world's happiest country. Mm -hmm. Not a country is happy. Forget the people. Just the country itself is just happy. Mm -hmm. For the sixth year running, okay? Mm -hmm. They're running after happiness and they're getting it. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan, on the other hand, remains bottom of the 2024 World Happiness Report, a league table of almost 140 countries. Now let me answer your question, mm -hmm. all right? Ranking shows the levels of unhappiness in countries. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenya... Let's talk about ranking. It's ranked 111. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it continues to rise because it dropped. It was a... Un hey, hey. Oh my goodness. It continues to rise because it dropped. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's fantastic. Uh -huh. I know. We dropped in terms of position, but yeah. we were 111. Yeah. Now we're 114. So it means the happiness dropped. That's what I'm saying. Uh, oh, the happiness uh, dropped. Yes, right. Got yes, it. Yes. Okay. Yes. We, 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 we became less happy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenya is 17th on this continent. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who are looking for reasons to be happy, mm -hmm. uh, we are behind South Africa, Algeria, Congo, Mozambique, Gabon, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Senegal, Nigeria, Cameroon, Namibia, Morocco, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mauritania, Gambia, and Chad. Nigeria as well. However, Kenyans are relatively happier compared to their neighbors, the Ugandans and the Tanzanians, mm. who are in a position of 117 and 131, respectively. Tanzanians are 131. No, Tanzanians are 117, Ugandans are 131. Eh. Uh -huh. According to this report, they are unhappy. But again, if you're looking for something to be happy about, mm. America and the UK dropped. They used to be in the first 20. I mean, if you look at people where people are happy, 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 mm. number one to 20, they mm. were there. But it has dropped eight points from number 15 to 23, while the UK lost one spot from 19 to 20. Okay? Uh -huh. So people are becoming less and less happy. Uh -huh. But gender levels among people. In this country, people under 30 are considered to be the happiest. Mm. Under what? 30. 30. Uh, hey. But then it begins to decline. Adulting uh, kicks in. As adulthood kicks in <laughs> and they get and they, they, they move on. Uh -huh. And according to this report also, mm. men who are above 60 tend to be happier than women who are above 60. You know, this one I had to mention. You had to. Especially yeah, with above your jig that you than than women who are above 60. Uh -huh. According to this that. report. Nice. I don't agree with them actually. Nice. We have seen women who are about fix those people look happy. <laughs> <laughs> they look there happy. There could be reasons for that. <laughs> 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 
Are we talking about single men above 60 or married men above 60? Yeah, Just men. About men uh, <laughs> stop, stop complicating a simple matter. Men. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> What did this guy hear me read? Please just leave him. Don't be angry. I'm still waiting for the answer. How do they measure the How happiness? How do they know? The annual happiness report focuses on GDP based on citizens purchasing power, a healthy life, and life expectancy. Uh. Okay? That is what they look at uh. among the things they do. Okay? So it's GDP per capita? Yes. And yes. life expectancy? Yes. And health conditions? Yes, because if your GDP is good, if you're in a class that is referred to as a middle class, mm. then you're likely to be happier because you're able to meet the needs that come across your way every day. Mm. But if you're not in that particular uh, bracket, then you have more problems than you can readily solve. So it's material happiness. Mm. There's material happiness. They said Nigerians are happier, B. Yes, they're ah. happier than Kenyans. It's because, you know why? <laughs> GDP is higher than ours. What? Miracle, not the tired Jesus. Hmm? <laughs> Miracle, not the tired Jesus. <laughs> yeah. This is why we are happy. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, mm. there's the aspect of social support. Mm. They also look at how it is that people get social support. A lot of the happiness is also uh, uh, associated with those who are more likely to receive social support. I think they're using a lens that is biased. Mm. It's concave as opposed to convex. Mm. No, <laughs> let me tell you. I, this they report see, when they talk about social support they are looking at social support from the state that's right? what yes because from countries where that is what is important yes. we don't have that yeah social support is your children you, your relatives you are your support uh, yes it's from there's those around you yes yeah. it's community family that's what we call social support not that's, government that's yeah. true mm. that's true i mean it's like saying that uh, you go to a community where people are not really bothered about the can i give you an example that's glaring in my head uh, i was sitting with a friend a couple of weeks ago uh, and we're looking at one boy sitting with his uh, family uh, and he just looked really sad uh, and you would think that as they sat at this table uh, they were enjoying the you know a meal nice meal but then there was a kid uh, just across who would look like really really disadvantaged uh, but this kid is jumping around he's having so much fun uh, But if you looked at them, you would think that the one with privilege would be happier mm. than the one who's out here, doesn't have shoes, whatever. Mm. But it was clear that the opposite is was the what case. was happening. So what I would, I'm also interested in terms of parameters, what do you use to then judge happiness? Because that child who's playing there, you can't tell him that his life is not good. He's enjoying himself. He's running about, you know, with his friends. Shoes, happiness, that's you. Me, you're, this, the, one that problem. you're the one who has the problem. Me, mm. where I am, I'm very, very happy. Let me just bring in age again, just so that we can equalize this thing. Mm. Uh, this report will show that women of the age 30 and below were clearly a lot happier than men mm. of that same age bracket. Mm. Mm. Okay. There's something about these men who are over 60. Mm. The former governor of Meru County launched some happiness something, something. She did, uh, sorry, he did. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? <laughs> he is part of something called the Happiness Institute. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And he recently graduated, something he had been studying for a while. Yeah. I think he went to Colombia to actually get his degree certificate. Yeah. But he had the institute in this country. Yeah. It is an institute that seeks to pursue an avenue and the course towards happiness. Yeah. Yes. So yesterday he was launching the Happy Happiness Club. Mm. Members of the Happiness Club of Kenya, led by former Meru Governor Kirai Tomorongi, I will open this thing, what's wrong with you? Um, gathered in Nairobi yesterday on on Wednesday to officially launch the outfit. The club launch coincided with the International Happiness Day, which is celebrated on March 20th. Wednesday was International Happiness Day. Yeah, it was. So no wonder we didn't feel a thing. Wow. Speaking during the event, Murongi, the chief happiness officer at the club, emphasized the importance of Kenyans reevaluating and realigning their lives towards happiness. Time has come for us to reevaluate, to refocus, to reinvent and realign our lives towards happiness and a future full of love, joy and laughter. You see, he's not talking about it, money, GDP per capita. We are celebrating International Day of Happiness to remind ourselves of happiness and cent centrality of happiness in our lives. Professor Pierre Lumumba was among them. He also spoke. He also called on the need for the country and Africa as a whole to embrace international happiness. It's not known to many that on the 28th of June 2012, the General Assembly of the UN designated this day as the International Happiness Day 
it's unfortunate that it's uh, no day celebrated the launch of the club of the club comes after murungi late last year revealed that he had successfully completed a one-year degree course in happiness studies from the happiness studies academy <laughs> okay all right i think we need to bring him here mm. come on what is his happiness story i mean no i will I mean, how do we measure I will invite him and tell him to come and talk about happiness. please please next week mm. while the ink is still Wet. Uh, well, the ink is still inky. Mm. All right. Mm. Speaking about ink and what we do with it, queries over CBC classes for secondary schools, it's going to be an issue, right? Mm. Um, the CS has been before Parliament answering a couple of questions, mm -hmm. um, and the answers are not very encouraging. Mm. One of the things that we are asking is what happens with grade 9? Next year, 2025, will be your first cohort of grade 9s. Uh -huh. And uh, the question is, will they be domiciled? And that will be the final year of them in junior school. Yes. Okay. All right. And because from year 10, they are in senior school. Uh, All right. Uh, Questions have emerged over the construction of 10,000 classes in secondary schools during the Uhuru Kenyatta administration. Remember, that was supposed to have been done, and we had people who were even contracted to build furniture. Mm. The classes were meant to address transition challenges of learners to junior school under competency-based curriculum. It was for such a time as this mm. that those classrooms were supposed to be built. Such a time as this means in the next nine months. Mm. A report by the Auditor General cast a shadow over the ministry's spending on construction of classrooms in 2021, raising concerns about irregularities and unaccounted funds. Mm. The audit, which assessed the financial books of the Basic Education Department, flagged 1.78 billion shillings used for classroom construction as unaccounted for mm. so that means one of two things the classrooms don't exist mm. or you didn't receive them whatever you spent properly mm. the ministry had initially reported spending of 4.48 billion shillings on the project exceeding the approved budget of 2.69 billion by a significant margin the construction of classrooms aimed to address both congestion and already plagued the institutions um, and that already plagued in the institutions and prepare for the anticipated transit of grade six learners to junior secondary school under the new CBC. Mm. That happened two years ago. Now we're getting to the place where in the third year, which is grade nine, which mm. happens next year, mm. there's already a problem in terms of where are these students mm. going to go? Mm. And it's a glaring question now for the ministry. And unfortunately, the answer is we do not know. This was as before the decision to host junior secondary junior junior school was made. I mean, why are we having a conversation, a discussion about this? Mm -hmm. Why are we having a discussion? So they are going to senior secondary. So they're they're going into the last year. Oh, the of last junior year. Secondary. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if we said comprehensive school shall be mm. the lower primary and junior secondary, mm -hmm. that is what has been called comprehensive school. Why are we having a debate whether grade nine is comp is junior secondary or not? Mm. It should be clear. If if the government has already said and adopted that uh, task force report, that now we are going to call this comprehensive. Comprehensive starts from ECD to. Uh, primary school to junior secondary school yeah it's called actually junior school now not even secondary this it is, means mm. that they are all together and the, then you go to senior, senior secondary school. school you go to the other one but mm. now the conflation you know where the conflated issues come because in because they don't have classrooms number one number two mm. there's already suggestions from the presidential working party on education reforms mm. that especially now when you're going to go into pathways mm. that this pathway mm. progression mm. will start at grade nine do you understand that's where they've conflated the thing that you're not allowing then this junior school to complete at the end of grade nine you're now saying that what you will essentially do when you get into grade 10 you will begin in grade nine this is why it becomes so confusing with i mean why confuse things at the manner in which we are doing now you want to even move grade nines and say should we put them in high schools uh, or should we leave them in primary schools uh, where should we actually put them should we put them in high schools we don't have enough classrooms should we leave them in pri uh, primary school no in high school we have enough classrooms should we leave them in primary school we sorry we don't have enough classrooms mm. should we also leave them in primary school but we want to start going to pathways which essentially have been left for 10 yes, 11 yeah. and 12. Uh, What's the game plan in this whole thing? The ECD guy can come and explain that to us again. I think we'll ask him to come yeah. and explain to us. Yeah. So we can understand. Yeah. Time for the news. 7 a.m.
up your life. Good morning. This is the Newswire. I'm Lea Obaga. Head of Public Service, Finance CS, Public CS, as well as the Labour and Social Protection CS, the SRC and the Public Service Commission, after holding a meeting with KMPDU that lasted for about seven hours, have still failed to come up with a solution. Speaking after the meeting, KMPDU Secretary General Davdi Atella and other stakeholders stressed that the strike was still in place after failing to reach an agreement. We were able to enter into any agreement with the executive, especially in a matter that is before court. The judiciary was not a party in that uh, course. Now, there were 18 issues, and the first issue was failure to provide comprehensive medical insurance cover to the union members. I've been advised by the Minister of Health, that this issue is under consideration and that the other stakeholders will be meeting to find out what they have done and what they have not done and how that issue should be sorted out. Number two, perennial braid, braid posting and payment and general mismanagement of the internship program. Speaking before the session, Head of Public Service Felix Gasquet said President William Ruto is closely monitoring the ongoing talks, urging participants to embrace them in order to find a solution. My presence here today demonstrates a willingness to listen to each other. Kenyans out there are expecting us to thrash out our points of conflict and step out with lasting solutions. My office and I will be at hand to facilitate the process that has begun today. In our various offices and capacities, let us be genuine custodians of, the, of this process. In keeping with the teachings of St. Francis of Assisi, where there is some misunderstanding, let us endeavor to inject understanding. And moving on, families of the 11 Kenyatta University students who lost their lives in a road accident in Maungu area near Voi town on Monday evening have described the deaths as a big loss, not only to them but the entire nation. The families who attended a post-mortem examination exercise at the KU funeral home appealed to the government to help them foot the funeral bills. The results reveal that all the victims died as a result of severe head injuries sustained during the accident. Kama wanaweza simamia mochari bill wa simamie sanduku na clothing and then transport to to the nini eh, lakini sasa wakikubali tunaweza itoa tu waone vile tu wanaweza support from that end isafirishwe na ambulance yao kama iko then alazwe kule then from there we take over he is one of the jovial sons that we have in our family and somebody who is fairly open and uh, a good person whom you can discuss everything without looking of his age. The Salaries and Remuneration Commission says Kenya is living beyond its means and that the cost of the wage bill is eating into much of the country's revenues beyond the allowed maximum of 35%. SRC Chair Lin Mengej says the growing appetite and endless hiring by the government risks pushing up the wage bill further, making it difficult to reserve resources for delivery of services and development. What we are finding today in all levels of government is we are carrying excess staff establishments. They are way above our impost, especially national government and state corporations. And finally, Chief Justice Martha Kome has defended the judiciary over the new housing levy law, saying the third arm of government was not part, party to any agreement for the implementation of the program. Speaking in Naivasha, Kome said the judiciary is independent and its mandate was to execute its legal duty in regard to the housing levy issue. She highlighted that ju the judiciary was an independent party in the court case, which had earlier seen implementation of the levy suspended. That's the news wire. I'm Lea Ubaga.
Spice FM, Nakuru. Jumping on after 7 o'clock, and what does it look like? It doesn't look like today is going to be too crazy a Friday, but you never know. Let's see what it looks like right now. Coming off of Vicar Super Highway, traffic is tailing back to around KCA. Before that, you're coming in and no problems all the way in from... Um, the right out towards just there at survey and that's where you see the most of traffic right now also on kiambu road one lane only of traffic inbound going towards muthaiga square limuru road also looks the same because you know a little bit of traffic but no hold-ups really um and also james gishiro spilling over towards the red hill link road and then traffic just disappears we're not seeing much happening on gong road just at that junction coming in and joining with naivasha road you're going to get onto riara road without an issue whatsoever the eastern bypass coming in hot through towards North Airport Road um, and also at Cabanas there and then going through towards Outer Ring. That's where we'll see most of the traffic for now. We're going to keep an eye on things and see how they develop through towards traffic hour. Let's talk on Spice FM, KE on X, hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way to All right, it's seven day. minutes after seven. Welcome to everybody who's now joining us on <coughs> KTN Home. Uh, this is the second hour of the Situation Room mm -hmm. this lovely morning. Others are tuning in on Spice FM, on Spice FM Radio, on Spice FM Online Radio, and on YouTube and Facebook. Spice FM is our page. We want to acknowledge people who actually are watching in live right now or listening live right now. And then there are very many people, tens of thousands, who we'll catch up with our conversations later. Many have told us, oh yeah, I actually follow the discussions maybe later in the evening when I've gone back home and I'm now chilling. That's when I tune in to Spice FM, the Situation Room on YouTube, and I uh, follow the conversation on what's happening, uh, what's happened earlier in the day. We also want to acknowledge you because you're watching this now, not now, you're watching this now, later, <laughs> later now, okay, you're watching it, um, Asante Nisana. Everybody who's doing that now people in the diaspora have been telling us all right So I want to participate in this project by username investment. It's called what the project city Serenity Springs Serenity Springs in Lanette yes. and they've been saying so the numbers you've been giving us at the SMS the word plot to 20321 I'm in the diaspora. I'm not able to SMS that or call 0725 000 Okay, how about a uh, because I'm having challenges. Maybe I'm awake when the guys at username are asleep username have said oh by the way it's possible for you to have a conversation with us you can whatsapp us on that number zero seven two five triple zero triple two send a whatsapp message from wherever you are across the globe and talk to them and ask them about serenity springs in lanette an eighth of an acre is going for 1.499 million shillings you can also email them diaspora at username.co.ke the number again for username do zero seven two five triple zero triple two very good your city mm -hmm. how can you pay well depends mm. depends on whether you have the entire amount that is required for yeah. the eighth of a plot yeah. which is one million four hundred and ninety nine Kenyan shillings yeah. that is for a residential plot yeah. a commercial plot on the other hand mm. well, that's same size it is 1.6 am i getting it right four nine uh -uh. <laughs> no commercial plot oh commercial commercial mm. residential is one four nine nine commercial is one six four nine mm -hmm. okay you can opt to pay in three installments mm. 
in six installments mm. or even in 12 installments. Mm. All those are available to you. Very good. Yes. It depends on what you're able to do. Yes. Yes. You can use this as an investment for now. As there are many people who do this as land banking. So you say this e watch an inuesai. It's Lanet. This place is developing. This place is close to so many amenities and the city of Nakuru is expanding. Definitely if I buy now, I can just use it as an investment. Part of what they call retirement planning. There are very many ways in which people are just planning for future years. And we want to have a conversation about retirement planning now. We're joined by Angela Diambo. She is the business development manager in charge of pension sales at Britain. Angela, how are you? Fine, thank you, Eric. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Asante sana. We call that the hot seat of the situation room. Okay. Yeah, everybody who comes in there, and to achieve 50,000 shillings. <laughs> 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 okay. But for you, yes. because it's for retirement, we'll talk about how it shall benefit us in future. Yes. When we turn 64. City. Yes. You're getting yours today. Well, as a man who's 65, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that particular watermark nearly Peter Kidogo. Sindio. Yeah. Mm. That so, in Arias. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you welcome Angela with the day's proverb, City? I actually will. And Apro somebody, Brian, is reminding you of your promise to give us two proverbs this hour. Yes. Uh, he's reminding me. Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm. Um, our proverb for the whole of this week come from the country of Burundi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, this proverb was interesting. Today's proverb is even more interesting because it's simple, straightforward, and to the point. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Yes. Uh, Angela, what's your interpretation of the proverb? Um, that is even in the context of our conversation this morning. Mm. Uh, yes. Say it again, Siti. Without effort no harvest will be abundant so that you won't get harvest mm. yes. you'll get it but it won't be abundant yes so so we have to put in efforts mm. for our harvest to be abundant in our context this morning discussing retirement planning then we need to put some effort early enough to make sure that our retirement is a happy time and we live an abundant life mm. at that particular time nice yes. one Slide right in, right? It does. Very good. Second yes. proverb, City? Well, this one, yeah. it's a, one of these interesting proverbs that someone needs to pay clean mm. attention mm. because it is easy to misinterpret. Mm. Okay? Mm. Are you ready for the proverb? I think so. Yes. All right. I am going to uh, ad lib the proverb. He who wishes to help the mother-in-law cross a flooded river must touch her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he who wishes to help the mother-in-law cross a flooded river must touch, touch her, her bottom. bottom. <clears throat> the reason is you're going to have to carry her. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you carry her on your back, whether you like it or not, you're going to touch her bottom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes you must go through uncomfortable situations to get through. Abby? Mm. I am not going to speak further. Mm. Having mentioned the proverb, I will leave it right there. Mm. And leave it for people to interpret as they see fit. Mm. I think I like Ndu's interpretation of it. Yeah. Say again. Sometimes you must go through uncomfortable situations to get through or to get ahead. You must be prepared yeah. to go through uncomfortable situations. Right? Yeah. Mm. It still comes into today's conversation, doesn't yes. it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For we, we must prepare ourselves to help our mother-in-law cross the river. Cross the river yes. We must also then be ready to touch her bottom. Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Angela. Yes. Retirement planning yes. is um, what you do yes, it at is. pensions yes. at uh, Britain. Yes. What is retirement planning? Just so that we are on the same page. Okay. So retirement planning is is a journey actually so that's a process that you go through to plan for when you retire it's not possible to to wake up one morning and say you're retiring and you're you're stopping you're, you're stopping to work and you want to to go into your you know your retirement and to relax mm. so you have to start through a journey which needs to be planned 
So there's a process you follow, putting in place measures to enable you secure your retirement by the time you're getting to your most preferred age. Mm. So it's a conversation that we have because um, as a country, Kenya, then there's a need to empower our people to start that journey early and especially the younger generation because we have young people who feel they have a lot of time before they get to to retire mm. so then our message and and what we focus on as britam is to empower people to start planning early to put in place measures mm. to walk through that journey continuously and deliberately mm. so that by the time they're getting to their retirement then they're comfortable and it's and it's a, a joyful time right. in their lives yes when you're talking about retirement yes. what age are you referring to um, so we have different ages. Uh, early retirement starts from age 50. Um, normal retirement age is at 55. Uh, the government retirement age is at 60. So any time from age 50, you can retire. There are individuals who choose to retire early, um, not in this economy as much. Mm. Then there are those who retire much later. We have people even in their 70s. We have city here mm. at 65. 65 and still actively in the working. So That's the thing. Yeah. You when you say retire, retire from what? City is retired. He's just having fun with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so my it's, my yeah. retirement officer has spoken. <laughs> 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 yeah, clearly. So, so retirement is when you, you leave gainful employment, mm. that you don't feel obligated to wake up every morning to go to work or to go to hustle. Mm. You can actually live comfortably for the rest of your life, that you're secured both financially and in the other aspects, that you're well taken care of and you don't need to work any other day in your life. So you're getting that comfort mm. and making sure that then if you're going to work, then it's just for your for purpose mm. or for for, for, for proverbs, for proverbs. <laughs> 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 or for any, yeah, whatever reason yes yeah, everything you say is actually very true yeah and it was true for a very very long time yeah you work for a certain period of time and usually it's people who are permanent and pensionable and upon retirement they either give you a watch a wheelbarrow or gum boots, gum boots. Yeah. And you supposedly, retirement meant going back to your rural home. Yes. Okay? Yes. But over time that has changed. People retire, they don't go back to the rural home. They visit the rural home, but they still stay in the places where they've lived most of their lives. Very true. That's one. Yeah. And in that earlier age, it was understood that the retirement plan was not the 1,000 or 500 shillings that you're given every month. It was your children. So one spent as much money as they possibly could to ensure their children got a very good education with the understanding that the children will support them as they get older. Yes. And in many, many ways it worked. Yes, it did. Then it changed. It changed because one, those permanent and pension jobs keep getting fewer and fewer and fewer. And when you look at the people who've retired, even when they've been in corporate jobs and they've gone home, many of them don't live long after they've retired. Yes. So, and some of them are comfortable. It's not that they don't have the money. There's a mismatch between the lives they lived then and then settling to the pace because the pace in the rural setting is very different from the pace in town. But I actually think it's a socialization because most people retire and the bulk of the people they were accustomed to associating with, they've left in town. Yes. And they go back home to start a completely new life. Now, those who ensured when they were working if they ensure that they integrate themselves in the rural life, then they settle in very nicely. Yes. And they just, it's just, they just step on and they continue. But not many people do. Now, how does the insurance industry step into this and how do they bridge this gap? Um, very good point, Siti. Um, th that, that conversation has been there. That the traditional forms of retiring where people used to of course depend on their children to be yes. their to be their retirement kitty for lack yes. of a better word um, and also the idea that we go back to the village mm. after we've stopped working mm. so that has shifted now um, and the other aspects that we look at beyond the financial security that you're trying to ensure you have by the time you retire we have the social aspects 
the community aspects so we take uh, we take members through this we take um, employees and and individuals basically through a training for them to appreciate that beyond securing their financial um, funds and their their benefits and all that then there's a social angle how how will they integrate what will they do post retirement because then you're used to working every day you're going to work you have a community in their office mm. now you don't have these people anymore you realize there are more of colleagues than friends mm. so then we take you through a training on how to cope with that lifestyle what purpose can you find in that space there are issues you face your kids are all grown up you're probably alone or with your partner so then how do you find community in that space what do you do so part of retirement planning is to take people through these things and as beta we really focused in this area because we start the conversation early so even as we're helping you build your fund and showing you the options that you have to grow your retirement benefits we're also teaching you the social aspects mm -hmm. we talk to people who've retired before to give their experiences and the idea is to help you um, up, get absorbed into the community comfortably and not feel now that you're, you know, you're no longer needed or don't have any purpose mm. by that specific time. Then we also do pre-retirement workshops. So these ones we target people who are approaching retirement. It's always easy to think and say, I'm about to retire. It's easy, but it's never that straightforward. So we, we go through a, a process. We even have counselors where we have conversations around what do you intend to do? Is the money you have enough? Um, are you even settled? Do you have a plan of what you're going to do? And it's always a continuous engagement because these are people who need to be to be talked to on a continuous basis. Mm. Yes. So those are the aspects we really focus on, even as we go through this retirement planning journey. So retirement is a big deal. Yes, it is. In 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 life, yeah. I mean, we have entire authorities, whole companies set up to deal with this because uh, it is a milestone. Um, what do you need? And I think, because I think a lot of people are swimming in uncharted waters here. Yeah. Because we talk about it, yeah, put something aside for a rainy day, do this, do that. But what do you really need when you're, you know, approaching or in retirement yes. that you should actually work towards in the years before you do retire? All right. Very good question right there. Mm. So we always say you start at 18. Most 18 year olds or 20 year olds will not think about retirement, they'll always feel it. It's way ahead, it's not yeah. coming up. Mm. So we start early. So the conversation starts from the point of what's your retirement goal? What do you intend to achieve? Do you want to maintain the same lifestyle then with what you're living now? Mm. Is your income going to be the same? Is, is the neighborhood you live in going to be the same and so forth? So that's where we start from. Then from that point, then we, d we look at income. How much are you earning? We've had conversations where individuals say they don't have enough. Mm. I don't, I don't make enough money to save. But we have tools that enable you to save even with as little as 100 shillings mm -hmm. or even 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you're not tied to a specific amount. It is you to plan yourself financially and say, I can even put aside 100 shillings or 50 shillings on a daily, 100 bob, 500 shillings. So you're able to now start building that fund. Then, <clears throat> sorry, then you also look at the time you have. How long do you intend to work? Do you want, are you looking to retire earlier, to maybe before 50? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to get to 50 or 60? So then you work towards that. So we give you a guideline. We even do projections. As Britain, we have very good tools mm -hmm. that we help our clients with. So we give you projections on, depending on how much you contribute and the period you have and the interest this money is going to earn because then there's that interest factor. Then we can actually estimate for you how much money you would have by the time you're getting to to your retirement age. Then along the way we review, is it working? Is it enough? Of course we encourage an increase depending on your income, how much it's growing, then you can always increase the much you're contributing. If you started at 100 or 500 mm. or 1000, mm. then you grow with your retirement benefits. Mm. There will be some things that come inside here, you know, other responsibilities. You start off, you don't have a family. Yep. Now you have a family. Yep. Mm. Now you have a mortgage, for example. You mm. want to buy a car, you want to change your your neighborhood and so forth so we walk with you through that journey just to make sure that we remain on course can you boost it if you can um, if you can't boost it can we maintain whatever we have for mm. now if there are any gaps then how do we address them as well mm. so it's a it's a wholesome um, 
training or support that you provide. It's actually the larger conversation around financial planning because you can't discuss retirement planning without, without looking at everything it. else. Yes. Yeah. So Sounds it's also part of that all very good and doable. Yes. You know, when you, when you hear it, when you talk about it. Yes. But from practice, yes. do you see people who start this retirement journey and they maintain it, especially when all these other pressures start coming in? All right? Yes. So you're working, you have what you thought was um, stable income then that income is, is disrupted you have new pressures coming in in life you have you know family is growing there is societal pressure I mean everybody is buying land everybody wants to go to Lanet Serenity Springs so you're thinking okay I'm not gonna be left out so how much money do I want to put in there there are all these other factors that come in yes. do you actually see people who remain true to this journey uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, a large group that remain constant in that journey mm -hmm. where their payment methods are consistent. So it is human that where you have to remind yourself to pay every month, mm -hmm. then you may struggle. You can even choose and say, I'm not contributing this month. Let me focus on buying a piece of land at, <coughs> sorry, at Serenity, for example. Mm -hmm. So we, we have mechanisms to follow up. Mm -hmm. So as Britam, we actually make regular calls mm -hmm. and engagement. So it's a regular engagement to know for the ones who are contributing, just to encourage them to keep contributing. And for the ones who are not contributing, then we understand mm -hmm. what are the issues. And you can imagine looking at the number, the sheer number of people we need to reach out of. Yeah. One of the key um, advantages we have is we have a huge distribution network. We have over 3,000 financial advisors mm -hmm. who are spread across the country, mm -hmm. making our reach much more easier because then they're able to engage people in all the major towns that we'd want to engage. So that forms part of our engagement strategy that we are talking to these people on a regular basis. We are trying to understand the, the issues they're facing because, of course, as human beings, then we'll have all these challenges and might not contribute at certain times. Mm -hmm. The beauty with a pension plan is it's your own individual account. So yeah. even if you skip on a particular month, you can continue in the next month. Mm -hmm. So there's no penalty mm. for not contributing. At the end of the day, you're the one who determines how much you would have saved. But we, may, we take measures as an organization to assist people in that journey and just encourage them, show them the benefits, and where they're struggling, even provide other solutions to take care of these other struggles mm -hmm. and ensure that they remain on course mm. uh, with, with securing their retirement. You're talking to a younger and younger uh, demographic, yes. right? Yes, yes. How easy is it to talk to them about pension, about retirement? Yeah. Uh, it's not easy, definitely. Uh, the younger generation, and I think this is, it's, it's, it's the same across. We'll always think that retirement is a far off conversation. You have a lot of time. You have, you know, 30, yeah. 40 years. But the years are flying. So, so we have those conversations. Mm. Uh, some pick it up you'll always realize that the older people from mid-30s are the ones who pick up such covers quite faster mm. than the younger ones. Why do you think that is so? Mm. Because I believe for the younger generation, even speaking for myself at that age, for example, then you're thinking you have time. You're thinking... But is it that you have time or is it the way that message is packaged and delivered to you? Because talking to an 18-year-old about retirement, yes. that message is mismatched completely. Mm. Yeah. How do you talk to an 18-year-old about saving money in a way that relates to them, yes. in a way that saving makes sense to them? Retirement does not make sense. Yeah, true. Yes. Very, very true. So, so our solutions, yes. um, like I said, uh, we have the pension plan, mm. which, like you said, if you told someone about retirement, an 18-year-old or a 20-year-old, then they'll tell you, um, probably doesn't make sense for me. Mm, not, yes. not now. Not now. Mm. We, we can think about it later. Mm. Yes. But if you look at it, if you explain it in that journey, like it's a journey for you that in as much as you're starting to save now we will have the long the short-term needs that Let you'll be taking you, care of yes saving yes this idea of saving yes in theory is a lovely idea <laughs> it's, really, it's really nice mm. with the idea of when you save at the end of the year there's this amount of money you can do things with yeah the things that you say you offer do more for you than just saving mm -hmm. okay yes now the other things that it affords a young person, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. 
Just the aspect of insurance, for instance, okay? okay? okay. Explained and broken down so that a young person can understand why insurance. You know, at 18, you think you'll never die. In fact, as far as you're concerned, <laughs> I mean, what's there to worry about? Mm. Illness is just a minor inconvenience. Yes. There are so many things okay. that a package like that offers yes. which can actually make sense. Okay. But in an African setting, saving, people in this country have chamas. It's a way in which they save. We even have table banking, I'm told. Yes. Another such means of, 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 of getting people to get money together. How do you actually make this thing a cultural thing so that people understand it to be the thing that one ought to do. You know why? Mm -hmm. When people save, then the very thing you're saying becomes very, very possible. Yes. When you then talk about retirement, it's not mm -hmm. difficult for them to comprehend. Mm -hmm. But just to save the idea of putting money aside. Because yes. the bulk of the people who even earn regular income will tell you it is next to impossible to put money aside. So, what incentive must one have in order to make putting money aside attractive? Very good question, uh, right there. So, targeting the younger generation, yes. then the conversation would be, what are these things they need to take care of yes. immediately? Yes, yes. the things, the, the, the issues, the concerns that they have, mm. the, the short-term goals that they have, the things they, they have emergencies for, for example. Mm. A younger person would think, I'm planning to get married, right? Mm. So I need to save towards that. Mm. I want to go for a, for a holiday. Buy a car. I want to buy a car. Yes. I want to to go with my friends for a trip or anything like yes. that. So that's the starting point. These are things they can relate to. Mm. So then they can have a culture for saving for these things and they can appreciate the need for that. So then now when you start having the longer conversations now, you get married, you're getting kids, you need to save for that for school fees. You want to buy a house then. So, so then it's a running conversation. And, and I really agree with the point you made there that then the conversation needs to start from from what they can relate to at this point mm. to encourage them to save mm. so that now eventually now when they're thinking about retirement then it makes sense because they're able to deal with these smaller things here mm. and at the same time have a plan for the bigger thing that's coming mm. and it's possible to have different accounts for all these things for all these mm. yes let's talk about the products that you have okay all right yes um after this break the products that you have that then would help somebody through this journey yes and the benefits that you can accrue okay. from any all these products as you continue saving towards retirement and retirement like we said is not necessarily the age of 55 it's not the 60 year, year age that the government has said it's when you want to stop being active yes but whatever you have put aside can help you live a comfortable life for the rest of your life without having to wake up and go toil right yes you can decide to retire at 35 if you're 18 today you can work towards that let's take this break angela adhiambo is the business development manager in charge of pension pension sales at britain she's here we're talking about evolution of retirement planning and navigating the challenges and embracing the evolution in the markets 27 to 8 back shortly this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. The weather oh, with spice. This morning, 16 degrees. We'll see highs of 28. And 31 will be the high in a sunny Nakuru at 16. It's 15 and sunny in Yeri, going to highs of 29. And we'll see highs of 29 as well in a sunny Eldoret at 14. Mombasa is sunny at 27 with highs of 32, while in Malindi it's sunny at 28 with highs of 33. Kisumu is sunny at 21 with highs of 32 and we'll go to highs of 34 in a sunny Kakamega at 18. 19 and sunny in Kampala with highs of 30, while Dar es Salaam at 25 is sunny going to highs of 32. We'll see cloudy conditions in Johannesburg where it is at 15 degrees, highs of 24. So we're looking to a sunny Mogadishu at 29 with highs of 33 and 27 will be the high in a sunny Addis Ababa at 14. It's 26 and mostly cloudy in Lagos with highs of 33 and we're looking into a cloudy Kinshasa at 25 going to highs of 30 and lows of 24. up your life 
All right, a little bit of a hold up on Kangunda Road, and as whilst you're getting out towards Mama Lucy and then touching on Outer Ring, but that's really how bad it is. That's just it. Um, also on the Thicker Super Highway, we're just looking at where your service lanes come to an end, and then out towards the Pangani underpass where there's bumper to bumper traffic there. It's also moving really slowly on Limuru Road as you get out towards. Um, Jim Kana and then touching on Chiromo. So let's watch out for that. And as you're coming in then from James Gishuro, um, you see a little bit of traffic at that junction with Nzima Springs as you get out towards the drift and then touch on Waiakiwe. But most of it is coming off Ngong Road and a little bit here and there on Naivasha Road uh, touching into the city. The Southern Bypass, there's a smidgen of traffic there, not quite sure what's causing that as you approach that interchange then getting onto Langata Road. So let's keep an eye on that and see what happens. Shout out just in case you know what's up. And there's North Airport Road heavy with traffic this morning, bumper to bumper from the Eastern Bypass out towards Outer Ring. Eye on this. Let's see what happens as we get into traffic hour, which is what's happening right now. Let's talk Spice FM. K E on X hashtag the situation room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, the business Nairobi. The manager for pension sales at Britam, Angela Aviambo, is our guest this morning. So, Angela, what are these customized solutions that Britam has for those who are working on their retirement plans? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Eric. So, we have plans targeting individuals as well as corporates. I'll briefly speak on the individual product. Mm. It's an individual pension plan where you can save as a person. You only need to put in a certain amount every month. Uh, we encourage regular contributions. We have different modes of payment. You can pay through M-Pesa, through a direct debit mm. if you're accessing through your bank mm. or check off mm -hmm. if you're, it's being done through your pay slip. We encourage people to do the contributions regularly in this account. The, the way of setting it up is very easy because you just need to fill a form, attach copies of your ID and PIN, and we are good to go. We have a customer portal where you can now manage this account comfortably. You can do top-ups there. You can withdraw from the same account if you wanted to, although we don't encourage it, but it's an option there. You can update your beneficiaries. You can withdraw everything. Yes, you can, as long as they are your own contributions, yes, mm. because it's your own savings. Okay. But we do encourage uh, people not to withdraw because then the plan is for the long-term need. Mm. So the individual account is for individuals who are not part of any organization but want to save on their own. Mm. If you get a lump sum from whichever source, you can always put it in there so you're not limited to the regular contributions. Uh, so that's how an individual pension account actually works. So that's called an individual pension account. Yes. How different is that from just a normal savings account? So the biggest difference here is you enjoy some benefits you wouldn't get from a normal bank account. Mm. So one, there are some tax benefits that you'll get. So there's some tax relief you enjoy mm. when you're contributing into a pension plan. Mm. Number two, you have the power of compound interest. So we declare uh, returns on an annual basis, which are applied into your account, mm -hmm. and this return is compounded. So your fund is able to grow at a much faster rate. You have the benefit of access to our other products, since Britam is a diversified organization providing different solutions. Mm. So because we, we know you and we have access to information, then you have the opportunity to access other products at discounted rates, which you not even be able to get if you're not part of our of our books. Mm. We also have member education forums where we bring these people together and just train them and educate them and teach them more about their retirement and guide them through that journey. Okay. So then that's very different than if you are saving in a bank account where you can access this money mm. whichever time you wanted to access. You wouldn't enjoy the tax benefits you'd enjoy in this account and so forth. There was something about a mortgage. Yes. Right, there's a uh, there can there's a mortgage benefit here. Yes, tell us about it. So you can you can assign up to forty percent of your of your pension benefits as collateral for a mortgage. So that's a regulation that's there, mm. uh, just to help you access a larger benefit than if you are not um, you are not part of a pension scheme. So that way, if for example you are 
going to be given say 8m by a financial mm. then they probably even give you more to take care of the early costs the costs you incur like stamp duty fees and so forth when you're taking up a mortgage so that's just a benefit the government has put in place to enable people to so up to 40 percent of what you have saved in your pension account yes and the idea is that even if you defaulted it's your house for example that will be it will be taken away not your pension benefits because mm. these are secured and the idea is for you to access them after you have retired mm. yeah okay yeah. so then how do these kick in later um because yes. so now you get to whatever age it is and yes. then what you've been putting away how does that then play out so at the point of you signing up mm -hmm. whether as an individual as a corporate so let me just circle back corporates can also uh, sign up for our pension plans we have a very good product for smes uh, organizations with even as less as, as little as two employees mm. can actually take up a pension scheme where both the employer and the employee are contributing. So whether you're doing it as a corporate or as, a, as an individual, you can choose whether you want to sign up into what we call a pension fund or a provident fund. A pension fund means at the point when you retire, you can access up to a maximum of one third of your fund. Mm. Then the balance of two thirds will be paid to you as a regular income. That's a pension fund. Yes, that's a pension fund. Mm -hmm. When it's a provident fund, then you can access everything as a lump sum. Mm. So now that's... Say that again. Yes. So for a pension fund, yes. you contribute and upon retirement, you can access only partial yes. as a lump sum. Yes. Up to? A maximum of one third up to 30 percent 30 percent of, of the fund of the fund yes then the rest comes in as regular payments as regular payments, monthly or payment. quarterly or yearly yes what is that so that is a product now you purchase post retirement so there's a solution we call an annuity where now we sell you a product that you give us a lump sum and then we pay you a regular income for the rest of your life so for as long as you're alive you're guaranteed an income mm. yes but the income is based on how much you have of course definitely based on how much <laughs> you have the lump sum you have i can give you a million then i'll be wanting a million every month <laughs> yes <laughs> so now <laughs> you get a <quite> lump sum <laughs> yeah so it, it's dependent on those factors right but what it ensures is you have a regular income that is guaranteed mm. for the rest of your life mm. yes so then these were these other options that you've given us in terms of then how you put money aside yes how does that kick in then when i get towards retirement you start paying me something a little bit per month or you pay me one lump sum for year over a couple of over a number of years how exactly does it then play out so that whatever period you choose yes. quarterly that you have something yeah. that you live off on so, so so what we'll do of course if it's a pension fund we pay you the lump sum mm -hmm. the 30 percent then for the 70 percent we compute for you if you have 10 million for example as your retirement benefits mm -hmm. and we pay you 3m as 30 yep. percent then the 7m will compute for you a certain amount that will be your regular income you choose how you want us to pay you mm. whether it's monthly quarterly semi-annually or annually so we determine that we, it's actually a quote mm. giving you different options mm -hmm. and other benefits if you'd like mm -hmm. whether you wanted a last expense benefit, mm. whether you would like to medical. even have a medical cover mm. at that particular time mm. because medical is also a big need yep. for retirees so we, we factor in all that in there mm. we agree you sign off then we start paying you on a on the regular basis so you'll have a, an income yeah that you get but that who determines regular. Britain will determine how much yes we, we give of you the options. 7m that yes, I have the 7m yes yeah, I okay so yes. what are you basing that on so we base it on the, of course the amount that you have so let's say it's a yes. 10 million that I had you've given me the 30 yes. percent 3 million you've given me up front I have chosen to pick I don't have to right yes you don't have to. I can still say this 10 million put it into the annuity yes so what what are these matrices that you'll use to determine how much I get the biggest matrices will be the amount, mm -hmm. the 10M or the 7M, whichever you'll have gone with, mm -hmm. and your age. Uh -huh. Yes, that's, a, that's also a big, a big area we look at. Okay. Yes, so that is what will determine mm -hmm. the amount of money you get every month. Okay. okay. Yes. What happens in the um, inevitable event of death? Mm -hmm. If somebody has put a lot aside and unfortunately passes, what happens? Uh, so within the arrangement of the annuity, this product that you've purchased post-retirement, so, so there's a difference post and pre. So if it's pre, mm. when you've been saving, you have a huge amount of money, you haven't even retired yet, yet and then you pass on. So you'll have nominated beneficiaries at the mm. point of signing up, so we'll pay your beneficiaries 
those funds. Okay. The full amount. The full amount. Okay. As a lump sum. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So everything you have accumulated will go to your beneficiaries. And that's how you see some people even use it as a legacy planning. Mm. You use your pension benefits for the benefit of your of your beneficiaries or your kids or whoever your it is you want to yes mm. for your estate. Now post retirement, if you have signed up with the annuity, then if something happened to you, when we give you the computation of how much you'd get every month, we provide a provision for your beneficiaries. That even when you're not there, mm. your beneficiaries still get to to benefit. Until mm up to a certain period mm -hmm. so you choose it oh. so you can say do they benefit for the next 10 years or for the next five years or for the next 20 years so it's x number of years after i die yes, mm. yes. but until i die i shall be receiving until this you die, you shall be receiving that. okay and you actually have an option of even in joining your spouse mm. yeah that we can pay you if something happened to you the payments revert to your spouse for the rest of their life as well who is the custodian of this and i ask this because yes. <laughs> you just know how it is in the event that somebody does pass yes. and that this money has already been put aside and you have who your beneficiaries are yes. okay let's say children mm -hmm. right yeah. and if those children are not of age obviously to manage for themselves yes i would assume that um you wait until a certain age and then you start to pay yes. these children yes. who is the custodian of this to guarantee that because this who's gonna check you're not there right mm -hmm. and one would assume that you were the soul yeah. whatever yeah. who who would make sure that these children will get what was left for them okay so the normal way we do it mm -hmm. currently as kenyans is we have if the beneficiaries are below 18 years of age then you have a guardian mm -hmm. so you nominate a guardian who will take charge of these funds mm -hmm. and take care of your of your children mm -hmm. so now we have those concerns where people say they're not sure if i'm not there mm -hmm. this person i have nominated mm -hmm. will they be able to to actually step in and take charge mm -hmm. so then there's the option of of setting up a trust for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. so that's an option you can choose which many people are now doing mm -hmm. so that now that way you have a more formalized way of managing these funds mm -hmm. that even if you're not there you have actually determined and said this is how I would like you to treat these funds. This is how my people are supposed to benefit and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that you're able to, to, to allay those fears you may have mm -hmm. that the guardian or whoever you've put in place might not do what you'd like them to do. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot has been done in terms of regulation and, and all. Uh, yes. you, reti you are regulated by the Retirement Benefits Authority. Yes. Now, talk about the security of the funds. I'm putting in money for retirement, which is X number of years down the road. How secure are my funds through this period and even after retirement? Yeah, very good question right there. And I know it's usually a big concern for many clients wanting to know you're saving with us. How safe are these monies? So one, we are regulated. So we operate within the Retirement Benefits Authority's regulations. They even define for us how to invest the money because we just can't invest wherever it is we want to invest. Mm. So there's a guideline that we abide by and comply with those regulations. <clears throat> the other uh, guidance that has been provided that these funds are held separately from the companies investments mm. so pension benefits have a custodian who holds the monies and the assets away from from the organization so that that way then the members benefits are secured that even if something happened to the organization which in the case of britain i don't see that happening mm. but if it did then your pension benefits are still safe secure. and they're secured yes yeah. mm. so you can be sure that's taken care of can only move to the next provider and they continue meeting the obligation so let's talk about where an organization an sme or a big company yes. opens a fund yes. with britam yes so they deduct money from the employee and yes. they're also contributing yes. some money to it in the event of non-remittance mm -hmm of funds yeah. to this uh, pension fund what happens so so non <clears throat> sorry non remittance can be a factor of them not having the funds anymore yeah. to remit which means they're not even paying their employees yeah. that would be a factor the other factor would probably be that they are deducting but they are not remitting yeah just yeah. poor corporate governance yes mm -hmm. so we make follow-ups on that we actually we have an sla an agreement that we agree by a certain date they should have remitted the money so then if they haven't then we do a follow-up on the same we have to notify the regulator also to come in so, so we can check with these people how come they're deducting money from the employees and not remitting because remember when the monies don't come to our end they're also losing out on 
the interest because mm-hmm. interest is earned from the day the money comes mm-hmm. so we have a, a, a vibrant framework even the trustees that we have in place would make follow-ups and just make sure that these organizations are complying so how immediate do you kick in because I'm looking at it as an employee of, a, of this company. Yes. Their money has been deducted at the end of the month and they're receiving their pay. Yes. Okay? Yes. Ideally, it should have been remitted within a few days. Yes. Within by, by like the 5th or the 9th of the next month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And interest starts accruing immediately. Yes. Now, this is for the benefit of that employee. Yes. If the company has not remitted in a month, two months, three months, four months, the disadvantage is to the employee. The employee. Yes. So, how soon do you kick in to ensure that the actual benefit is being realized by the employee, the contributor? So we kick in immediately. By the date by which we are expecting the funds to have come through and they don't, we make a follow-up. Every scheme that we have in our books has a relationship manager. The relationship manager is responsible for managing all the activities of the scheme, making sure that funds come in, they are posted, statements and so forth, all those administrative items are taken care of. So immediately monies don't kick in, then we are also following up and finding out immediately what's the issue so that we make sure we don't have a lapse that we have several months and funds have not been remitted. So we would not have a case where a month misses and we haven't made a follow-up and even reported the same. Yeah. You know the economic situation we have in this country yeah. is one where we unfortunately have more and more people losing jobs that afforded them a regular pay. Yes. Now in such circumstances if somebody was a regular contributor and uh, this unfortunate occurrence visits them, how do you handle such cases? So we'll know, we'll know that something has happened because we are continually engaging them. On a monthly basis, we normally call all these clients and have some form of engagement, either even through the agents that we have on the ground. So if something happened, for instance, they lost their job, then we'd have a conversation. Uh, within the pension arrangement, there would be no penalty or anything they would incur. They can choose, we'll, have, we'll discuss and agree, do they want the funds to continue being there and earning interest? They don't need to contribute anymore because they don't have a, a regular source of income. If they're really tied up, can they access a portion of it? Some of them would want to use it to start maybe something they want to do. That is an option. We would encourage them not to touch it if they don't really need to touch these funds. But if they needed to, then they can access those money. So it's an engagement we'll have with them. Um, and of course, beyond even the pension account, probably they would have other products that they have with us that would be affected. So then it's for us to, to provide a solution to them how well would we be able to help them transition during this stage mm-hmm. and for the specifically the pension benefits they have an option of having them continuing an interest without them having to contribute further. Can I ask the question? Yeah. Britain is an insurance company, is it not? Yes. Can you insure against such occurrences? Yes. There are, there are policies to take care of retrenchment and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Yes, so when are. people go into these financial arrangements that we're discussing, Yes. And they do not foresee they'll be retrained, they do not foresee that company will shut down. Yes. Do you also advise them at the very onset that given the uncertain terrain that we now live in, yes. perhaps you could consider taking an insurance, blah, 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 blah. Is yes. this part of the package? Yes, it is. The member education forums that I mentioned, and I like that question because it just speaks to some of the activities that we do for these clients. Mm. When we have them in these forums, we talk to them about the other products that we have. Mm. So we are not just on the retirement planning journey with them. We encompass all the other solutions that we offer as Britam. So they are aware. They are aware of these other covers that are available and in the eventuality of something happening whether it's the retrenchment or even death. We have last expense covers, um, medical issues, we have health insurance and so forth. So we're able to provide them with all this information. And by virtue of them being our clients, we even have discounts just to give them fair deals when it comes to those products. So yes, we do share that information with them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, looking at, obviously, so looking at the lifeline of all of this, and then one often asks the question is that, how then are you able to ensure that this money is is coming back yeah very simply what do you do with the money that then makes it possible for you to pay people more money later 
So we invest the money. Mm. We we have to invest the money because we declare returns on a regular basis. So when we collect these funds, we invest them in a guaranteed fund. Mm -hmm. So the fund we run for our individual clients as well as the SME is a we call it a guaranteed fund. Mm. The biggest benefit with this fund is that the member can never get a negative return, simply put. Mm. It is guaranteed, their capital is guaranteed, and then the interest is also compounded. So since we're in a competitive market, we endeavor to give the most content, competitive returns for them. For the last 10 years, we have an average of about 10% that we have offered. Mm. So just speaking to how much we want to give them, mm. the best in terms of the returns that they can earn from their benefits. Mm. So we, we have a team of experts in our investments and treasury team who work now to look for the best assets where they can invest this money. Pension is a long-term business, so then, of course, they're looking to have assets that can sustain for that long, 20, 30 years, in terms of the investment income that they can earn. Mm. Yeah. There's a question that uh, Patrick is asking. Something is not clear on that uh, annuity yes. thing. Yes. Mm. <laughs> He's saying, assuming that you've given Britain the $7 million yes. to start paying yes. post-retirement, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you pass on after a short time. Yes. She said that they'll be paying next of kin for X number of years. Yes. Does that mean if those X years have passed and the 7 million has not been exhausted, what happens to the balance? So that product, the annuity, <laughs> is an insurance product. Yeah. Uh, the flip side to your question is if this person outlives the, the 7, seven million. million, we still keep paying. So it's a balance between that. Yes. So, that, so, so if, I, if I die before the 7 million? Exhausted. We will pay your beneficiaries up until the number of X years, mm. then the policy ends. Yeah. I see. Yes. So we give you options when we do the quotes, mm. just for you to choose what will work best. At that point. At that point, of yes. Retirement. Yes. Okay. Technology, of course, yes. is a new and it's a big thing. How has Britain embraced technology and what are you doing now, especially for pension funds? Yes. What kind of technological tools are you using? So we have a customer app for our pension clients. So clients can actually sign up online. They don't need to fill forms or visit one of our offices. Those options are still there, but if the, for those who prefer uh, the digital way, mm. you can actually sign up online. What's the app? The Britain customer app. Britain customer yes, app. Yes, if you just go to Play Store, mm. you can be able to access it. Okay. It's a customer app. How do you register? You you just log in. Mm -hmm. You or not log in. You you set up your credentials. Your yes, yeah. set up your account. Put in your details. Then you can begin contributing. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. How will I know that I'm actually uh, have downloaded the right the right Britain app and not some con man who's. <laughs> On, on, on Play Store, it's very clear. <laughs> Actually, we even do the training on right. how to sign up and okay. all that, and even how to maneuver through the app, okay. just for you to be able to know what, what to do, where to go. So from that platform, you'll be able to make contributions. Mm. You can top up. Mm -hmm. You can withdraw if you wanted to access a portion of your money, mm. update beneficiaries, check how your fund is growing after interest has been applied and so forth. Right. Mm. So you can actually do everything there. But for those who are not comfortable with technology, then we have now the, the analog where you can actually go to any of our branches. We have branches across the country, mm. uh, over 30 branches. So mm. you can just go in, sign up and... Is there a, a website where I can see the branches? Yes, yes. Where I can go and search, I mean, locate your nearest Britam. Yes, yes, we do. Where yeah. is that? What's so that our website? So our website is, is www.britam.co.ke. Mm. Okay. Yes, so you can log in there and So check. up, website. Up, website, mm -hmm. yes. Then we have, like I mentioned, the financial advisors. Thousands of them. Mm. Mm. So there's a joke. We have a running joke that anywhere you go, you'll always meet a Britain financial advisor. Mm. <laughs> yes, so these are people you'll always meet. Mm. They will. We so we go out. We even have workshops mm. across the country where we go with our financial advisors and engage with clients and mm. prospective customers. Mm. So then, if you have someone you know who works for Britain, then they can also help you sign up with this process. Mm. Mm -hmm. We also have a WhatsApp number which I can share, yep. where you can also write to us if you're interested. 0793 yes. 0793-304-927. Yes. 0793-304-927. That's a WhatsApp number. That's a WhatsApp number. Mm. So if you wanted to just chat and have a conversation, you'd be helped there. Mm. If you wanted to make a call, mm. our number is 0705-100-100. It's a simple one, 0705 
100, 100. 100, yes, you can also be able to. And it's uh, manned 24-7. 24-7. So if you have an issue at all, you want to talk to somebody at Britam, yes. 0705 100, 100, 100. 100 yes. Okay. Yes. Well, Angela, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think my parting shot, especially for the younger generation, is to start saving mm. and to start saving today. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Angela Adhiambo is the business development manager for pension sales at Britam. She's been here telling us about the Britam pension solutions and also the evolution of retirement planning, how you can navigate the challenges of uh, and embrace technology with this. She says you can talk to them at any time, 0705 or you can S WhatsApp them, 0793 You can download the Britam app. It's called... Britam customer app. customer app yes on your play store it's 8 a.m time for the news good morning spice up your life Good morning, this is the news wire. I'm Leah Obaga. President William Ruto is today expected to hold a meeting with the Treasury to review the budget and get rid of expenses that won't benefit Kenyans. Ruto says this is needed as the budget has been corrupted with unnecessary expenses which would benefit a few. Corruption is budgeted into our budget cycle. People budget things that they know will not go to the people of Kenya. I will be spending time with our treasury to make sure that with a tooth comb we eliminate anything that will not go to benefit the people of Kenya in our budget. He further called on his government officials, parliament and judiciary to deal with the nightmare of corruption in the country that had paralyzed various functions. And that is why it is our commitment that we need to enhance the office of the Attorney General, office of the Director of Public Prosecution, office of the uh, ethics and anti-corruption authority, members of the legislature, friends in the judiciary, to work collaboratively, to work together, build synergy, to make sure that we deliver on this plan, knowing very well that all of us are serving the Kenyan people. Chief Justice Martha Kome has defended the judiciary over the new housing levy law, saying that third arm of government was not party to any agreement for the implementation of the program. Kome's rejection of the claim comes hours after the High Court declined to issue conservatory orders suspending the housing tax until the matter is heard and determined on 16th May. What I could say or deduce from that conversation is that it was taken out of context or there was misinterpretation. Tumekubaliana na mahakama tuwe na sheria ambayo itapanga Mambo ya housing. Right to assure Kenyans is that the judiciary was not a party in that matter. The judiciary was dechanging our function of determining a dispute which was before us. We are independent, we are impartial, we were not parties to the case. This event comes as KRA has announced that housing levy deductions for the government's affordable housing project take effect from March 19th. The tax collector directed employers to deduct 1.5% from employees' gross salaries and remit it together with a matching contribution of 1.5% for each employee. Further, all other individuals who earn income in Kenya are required to remit 1.5% of their gross income as housing levy to KRA when signing the low President William Ruto described it as a major step towards enabling low income earners to own homes. Our Boda Boda and our Mama Moga are family in our equation. This program will make it possible for a Mama Mboga who today pays rent at 3,000 to pay 3,000 and own a home in Kenya. It will give a chance to a Boda Boda guy. And every hustler in Kenya who today lives in a shack that has no water, that has no electricity, that has no access, that has no uh, sanitation, it's going to dignify their lives. And they too, like the rest of society, can own a home. 
Minami Guri Senator Eddie Okecha suggested that the government should change the system of building affordable houses, especially in rural areas, by giving Kenyans cash to build their own homes. Kama mutu wakuna nyumba ya nyasi, hapa nyeri, chukua 50,000, patia yeye, aanze kutenua nyumba mabati. Na kama mutu wakuna nyumba mabati, chukua 60,000, patia hao, watengeneze nyumba mabati, na watengeneze simiti. Na kama muda mbarikiwa na kuna nyumba ya simiti na mabati na ana stima chukua 100,000 patia hao watengeneze stima. That is the kind of equal opportunity that can build Kenya. Not just a capitalist building of houses in Nairobi of 250,000 alafu muna sahau watu wa mashinani ambao are the real hustlers. That's the news why I'm now Ubaga. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. Lunga lunga dot dots of traffic as you're going out towards Likoni Road and coming in from Outer Ring. So keeping an eye on that. It's busy this morning. A little bit of it coming off of North Airport Road. Uh, Cabanas was busy going through towards Outer Ring at the junction. Let's take a look on the other side of the city and see what's going on on Uhuru Highway. As you get out into the CBD, it's busy as well. There's traffic coming off of Ngong Road and it's going to touch with what's happening on Haile Selassie. So that might be busy for a minute. The thicker superhighway is still thick with traffic, especially as you come off of survey heading out into the city. Kiambu Road said we're going to be done with this by 8 o'clock, and that's exactly what has happened, at least for now. We're going to keep an eye on things and see how they progress well into traffic hour. Limuru Road also says, you know what, guys, it's Friday. We've done traffic from Monday to Thursday. How about we give it a rest? Okay, well, let's see what happens. As we get through it, we'll talk on Spice FM, KE on X, hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation the Room. We are on to the, the start of the Situation Room this Friday. Thank you very much for tuning in. Also, we'll tell you about tomorrow. All roads will be leading towards Lanette in Nakuru City. Why? Because username investment are having another open day. Wednesdays and Saturdays. That's the norm. So tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. beware. In Nairobi? At Kencom. Okay. At 8.30 a.m.? Be at West Side. West oh. Side Mall, West yes. Side Mall in, in Nakuru, Nakuru City. Okay, because then you, from there you'll be heading to Lanet to Serenity Springs and you will see where your next home is going to be. Lanet is a beautiful place, isn't it, City? Oh, it is. Mm. It is. Um, someone who grew up in Nakuru, I should know. Mm. It's very, very beautiful. It but is. then that road to Alcalao is actually very scenic. It's lovely. It is lovely. Yeah. Mm. Serenity Springs is only 20 minutes from the C CBD of Nakuru City. Mm -hmm. Where is the CBD of Nakuru City? Well, if you are talking about where it is, mm -hmm. you can be availed free transportation to view, mm -hmm. then you're talking about Wayside Mall. Mm -hmm. Okay? But Nairobi isn't a very, very big city, mm -hmm. but it's expansive. Yes. Yes. And it isn't very difficult to try and locate where you are at. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is indeed a very easy one. 20 minutes drive from the center of Nakuru City. You go to Serenity Springs and you see what they've done. They've acquired this large piece of land. They have subdivided into uh, plots, an eighth of an acre. They have done the basics. They have done water, 
they sunk boreholes and water is available they have pulled power power is available on site they've done the maram roads inside they have also done the perimeter wall they've done the gate into the estate they have of course done the planning and there are also free spaces for community development and for recreation it's not that it's just or oh, put house, 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 household. No, 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 no. There are green areas, green spaces. They even started planting trees. And the old trees that were there have not been cut. So you move in, you build your house, you live like you've been living in the posh area of Lanet for a long time. Meaning there's tree cover mm. in that entire plot. Yes. Yes. How much is the, an eighth of a plot? Well, an eighth of a plot for a residential plot mm. is 1.499. In Kenya shillings. Yeah, that's so it. So residential 1.499 million Kenya shillings, and payment is 10 percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you wish to have an installment payment over a longer period, mm. it can be three installments, six installments, nine installments, or 12 installments. Mm. Yes. Just talk to them. Mm. What do you need to do to talk to them? Call them 0725 triple zero triple two that's zero seven two five triple zero triple zero you can whatsapp them as well on that number or you can sms the word plot to two zero three twenty one username investments will call you back and you'll have this conversation it's another year when the kalasha international awards are going to be taking place soon these are the premier awards in the region for the film industry it's a big thing and the ceo of the kenya film commission uh, joins us again this year to talk about these awards. Timothy Odiambo Oase, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you back here. I'm happy to be back. Karibu sana. Sorry. Last year we saw the very many winners, the Kalashas. I mean, Kalashas have become the main thing in this region. You win a Kalasha, you have all the bragging rights. Indeed. Yeah. We must recognize our artists. Yes. yes. And our very own Jimmy Gath, who has been nominated many times for these awards, mm -hmm. he is of course one of the, those very, very good actors in the country. Mm -hmm. And we are campaigning for him because, I mean, we are spies. We wish him the very best. <laughs> I mean, surely. <laughs> surely. Yeah, if you haven't voted for Jimmy Gath, go and vote for Jimmy Gath. Okay. You'll tell us more about the Kalasha Awards this year. City. Yes. Why don't you welcome Timothy with the day's proverb? I will welcome Timothy with the day's proverb. Mm -hmm. Our proverbs for the whole of this week have come from the country of Burundi, the Republic of Burundi. Yes. Okay. And today's proverb is a fitting proverb, simple, easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Timothy, this is a straightforward proverb, isn't it? Without a script, you cannot have a complete story. Allah. <laughs> you to a film. Speaking <laughs> all the time. Yes. yes. Without a script, you cannot have a complete story. Yes. Yeah. You have to have something. There's got to be input Indeed. for output to come out. Okay. So the Kalasha International Film and TV Market Awards, real money from the business of film. This is uh, what edition of the awards? This year we are hosting the Kalasha in a very different format. Mm -hmm. We are hosting the Kalasha International Film and TV Market, mm. the festival, and ultimately the awards. Mm -hmm. The market will be running for the sixth edition this year, mm -hmm. while the awards will be hosting for the 13th edition. So the event takes off from the 27th of March, which is next week on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and it closes on Saturday 30th when we will host the awards yes it culminates in the award gala exactly it's a On beautiful Saturday spectacle they, so what yeah. is happening between 27th and 30th daytime as we open the doors on the 27th mm. we have exhibitors we have exhibitions taking place at kicc we'll have conferences workshops and networking sessions also the commission will be hosting various film premieres in different parts of nairobi where we are calling on the public to come and participate. Remember, the commission holds various programs, ranging from capacity building, mm. uh, establishment of film hubs, researches, and so on. So we'll be undertaking various activities within the market to create an opportunity for filmmakers to network, connect, trade, and also do co-productions. Mm. So it's an uh, avenue 
for filmmakers to come in and really do the real business of film. Mm. Mm. You know, um, when you say film, mm -hmm. many people will think big movie, big production. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you mean? I, I mean all stories, mm. and stories can be told in different formats. It could be an animation, documentary, feature film, series, among others. And here we are referring to TV programs as well as films. Mm. Yes. Mm. What would you say there's been progression in terms of what you saw last year when we had a conversation around this time mm. and what you're seeing this year? Because by now you've already seen the trickle in of what's coming in, right? Um, how would you say that things have progressed? Because I remember the last conversation you had, you, and there were certain things that you hoped then it would get better, that mm. you'd see a, a wider range, a wider variety of folks who were then coming in with their submissions. Have you seen that progression? One I've seen a big difference. Mm. To start with, there are more young people who have joined the industry. Mm. This year we have a lot of uh, entries as compared to the past year. Mm. This time around we had 1,500 entries, which is a huge number. Mm. In addition to that, we have seen high quality productions, meaning the competition is quite high. I know you have uh, a Latif has uh, a favorite candidate on Kalasha, mm, <laughs> but the competition is, is very, it's is very deep, high. It gets because every day. the quality of productions cannot be compared to what we've seen before, mm. which is uh, a sign of progress. Yeah. Yes. It, and uh, if you just like give us the categories, this 1,300 entries you said. Entries. Three or five hundred. One thousand five hundred. One thousand five hundred oh. entries. Huh? Yes. In what categories? We have 39 categories, mm. but seven of those are very competitive categories, ranging from script to directing, mm. uh, producers, art design, sound, among others. Uh. Mm. Then we have special categories, that is Kituo Halisi, mm. as well as a Lifetime Achievement Award, mm. which will not be subjected to public uh, voting, mm. but they will be awarded based on uh, specific uh, elements that will lead to winners being announced on this particular day. Uh, I think lifetime achievement is clear. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's definitely looking at somebody who has contributed towards the film industry Correct. for long yes. and they've had meaningful impact. Mm -hmm. What is the Kituo Halisi? Kituo Halisi, we are looking at uh, a station. It will be KTN, KBC or any other that participates in supporting production in terms of l local content. You've heard of the 60% local content yes. quotas that is enforced by Communications Authority. So Communications Authority as our partner will be able to tell us which is this station. That is the Kituo Halisi mm. Award. Mm. Mm. Those are the ones that now get awarded for that. Correct. The other 37 are those competitive categories. That's right. You want to tell me there are 37 different categories mm. of people who actually do things both, in film bo both in tv and uh and film, and film. Mm. what what yes. is that for example as Just i said some of those that some some are obvious for example the some best are not obvious best actor mm -hmm. the best actress in a tv program mm. let's say the best sound designer among others what are some of the ones that you have seen where the competition has started becoming steep. Of course, the obvious ones, the best actors, uh, supporting actors and all, those are known worldwide. This is what makes the awards. But then there are these other supporting and, and, and crew roles that are crucial to the production of a film, but many people don't know about. Maybe you can spotlight some of them. I must say that all categories within the Kalasha Awards are competitive. And if you win a Kalasha, then we recognize that you have really done best or well within the competition. Mm. Yes. Mm. So I, I encourage the practitioners mm. to put in their best at any given time so that they are able to find themselves in this particular stage. Mm. Mm. So the question is actually to the benefit of those who do not understand mm. this industry. Right? People only see the ones that they see on screen. Mm. They see that they know, okay, so there was somebody holding a camera, okay. So, but then, yeah, all these other roles that are played in the production mm. of a TV show, a TV series, a movie, a documentary, mm. right? Some of those 
unknown sort of roles. Mm. Those are the ones I want you to mention. Some of those that now will be awarded. Very well. Mm. As I mentioned earlier, for example, the best actor in a movie or in a TV show, that's a specific category that I believe many people will be looking out for. I will also mention the best director. At any given time, for example, where we are now, I believe there is a director somewhere yes, who is Edna. able to tell us how to go about A and B. Mm -hmm. That particular category is uh, classified within the Kalash Awards. Think about uh, the best student category where we will be able to actualize by promoting a student by way of what they have been able to produce mm -hmm. and also to see to it that we are creating an array of competition within the learning institutions. This among others, think about the makeup artists, sound designer. Mm -hmm. These are people within the value chain that contribute to the actual production. And there are so many more others. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's interesting because a lot of times when we look at this side, we often, I think, you know, uh, we belabor that we don't give enough attention to the arts mm -hmm. that could actually be f significant contributors to the whole picture of a nation. And yes. in terms of what the arts are presenting and how you can actually use that to lift the profile, you know, here, regionally, and then on a global scale. How would you say it's necessary beyond these awards to then use these individuals to mm. showcase this very thing well this is a very fundamental topic let's appreciate the fact that when you talk about storytelling we can be able to utilize storytelling to champion the assets of our nation in terms of country branding through storytelling we are able to create so many jobs as compared to any other and i'll give you a very interesting fact last year in december we were able to publish the first ever survey undertaken by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics and supported by GIZ. The findings were very clear that during the year 2022, the Kenyan film industry was able to contribute 38 billion shillings to the exchequer. This is a figure that I must say is not small. Mm. It is very substantial. And given that this was a first going into the future, the potential is huge and the country can be able to pride itself in storytelling to be able to position ourselves as a, an investment destination, a tourist destination. We can use stories to be able to package our country as indeed a cultural country among other elements. So the benefits of the film industry cannot be understated. Mm. Mm. From the 27th, you'll have now the, ex the exhibition and all these other activities. T tell us about the exhibition. What happens at the exhibitions? At the exhibitions, I believe you've heard of uh, the Cannes International Film Festival. Yes. The Sundance, among others, the Balinale, and so on. Mm. In East Africa, we have the Kalasha International Film and TV Market, where we have businesses that actually do transactions within the film industry. Some of these businesses will be exhibiting at cases. They'll come to showcase what they have to offer. At the same time, they'll be hosting activities within the market to enable filmmakers, buyers and sellers of content to network, connect and do real business. Mm. On conferences, we'll have key speakers coming from different parts of the world who will be able to share with us various aspects or topical issues that are very fundamental within the industry. We've had issues to do with, the, for example, writers, the issue of AI whether we we are likely to see a serious change as far as writing is concerned in the margins of technological elements like ai whether they'll be able to replace human element or the human element will be maintained as far as this particular venture is concerned so these are very fundamental topics that we'll have we'll be able to discuss see to it that we are addressing issues that are actually pertinent to storytelling business. Mm -hmm. We'll also have issues to do with the policy, incentives, among others, that are very key to the growth and development of the film industry. Mm -hmm. So this is a wholesome package that we are going to have at KICC that will not only focus on uh, just looking at art as entertainment, but art as a real business. Mm -hmm. So where art meets business, 
as far as storytelling is concerned. Right. Mm. So we're likely then to have people who supply equipment, say cameras, lighting equipment, sound equipment and all exhibiting here. We'll have suppliers of filming equipment. Mm. We'll have uh, broadcasters. We'll have distributors, among others, in mm. the value chain. And remember, when we talk about storytelling, not only f do we focus on uh, filming equipment, you'll find that even hotels, uh, people who offer transport, lawyers, among others, they all contribute to the art of filmmaking. All these people will be there to showcase what role do they play within the value chain of film, filming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we going to a break or can I? Not yet. Not yet. Eh? You mentioned that the quality of uh, film productions has definitely mm -hmm. had an upward surge. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you determine that the quality has improved? What do we look for? First of all, the nature of stories and also the number of productions and how competitive they are. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've had situations where our own local broadcasters complaining that they are not able to find good quality productions mm. uh, that, that are locally made that can be aired on our free-to-air channels. But today we have so many of these that can be able to compete. And as we speak, we have over 25 Kenyan productions on international platforms like Netflix, among others. Mm. Yes. Oh. Mm. So when you compete on the national front, it is clear that you wouldn't be there if they were, it wasn't good quality. For you to, to make the frame, you must be able to meet certain uh, aspects in mm. terms of formats. Mm. Yes. To be able to compete at an international stage, mm. I believe you wouldn't just do any kind of production and submit. It must meet the threshold. There's then the question of those who participate mm -hmm. or those who are active participants in this industry, mm -hmm. the actors, actresses, mm -hmm. the, um, the backroom operators, and the remuneration they get. If our productions are competitive internationally, mm -hmm. are we saying that the remuneration is also competitive? That's a very interesting topic that we must be able to address as our people in the country. And the challenge goes back to the practitioners. As Kenya Film Commission, we are coming up with uh, an accreditation and certification program, which will see to it that there is what we call the code of conduct for the film industry practitioners. And in this, we are encouraging practitioners to form guilds and associations that are very strong to enable them champion their welfare. The issue of remuneration is straight up connected to a red card. Mm. Today, the country doesn't have a red card which I can be able to rely on and say that a city as a, an actor is supposed to be paid 20,000 shillings per day. Mm. But what is currently happening is that you may be qualified to earn 20,000 shillings per day, but your competitor who is willing to earn 2,000 shillings comes and shortchanges you. Yep. So when that happens, you basically don't earn what you deserve. Mm. So the reality is that we need strong guilds, guilds that will put value to the practitioners. Of mm. course, the commission is there to support you on this. Is, it, is it the role of the commission to support or do you have actually a direct mandate and a deliverable to ensure that we are developing film f on all these aspects as well? Is it something we can sit mm. back and ask, okay, so Timothy, as mm. CEO of the Kenya Film Commission, how many guilds have been formed under your watch or under your patronage or under your supervision mm. or under your guidance? Just to correct this, it's not the role of the commission to form the guilds. Guilds emanate from the industry. Yes. And what will happen is that through the guilds formations, the commission will be able to support them. And that is what we are doing. And that's why, because that has not happened for a very long time, I know we have guilds, but they've not been as effective as we would, we would like to see. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is that through certification and accreditation, we'll see to it that all these guilds and practitioners are conforming with certain code of conduct, which we'll see to it that on annual basis, just like journalists, we are able to give you an accreditation card which recognizes you as a professional within the film industry. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, 
your membership also should be able to accrue certain benefits. There is a reason as to why professionals, we subscribe to our professional bodies and pay on annual basis certain amounts simply because there is what we are getting out of it. Mm -hmm. This should also happen within the film industry and I think that has been a weakness. And as City said, you ought to be remunerated properly as a professional, whether you are an actor, you are a director, you are a makeup artist, makeup artist yeah. or any other. Okay. But that can be implemented well mm. if our guilds are really strong and are doing what they are supposed to be doing. Mm. But of course, we cannot uh, ignore the fact that Kenya Film Commission is there to support all these guilds to stand. How do industry players make their money? I remember, you know, working on a set every now and then, and if there's a mm. big sponsor, that's how folks on the set are paid. Mm. But how do we see the regular payment of actors, makeup artists, costume designers, producers, directors? Where does this money essentially come from? Just for an understanding of all that. Money comes from different uh, sources. Mm. First of all, you may find that productions are taking place out of commissioned work. Uh, for example, I know there are quite a number of uh, productions that are taking place at Derry Village in Kikuyu mm -hmm. that have been commissioned by pay TV channels in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Some have been commissioned by free to air channels. So you'll find that executive producers are actually the people or the companies that provide money mm -hmm. to these productions. Mm -hmm. When it comes to pay, it's an issue of contracts. And I think contractual obligations between the executive producer and the industry film agents that's again it's a whole game that we are, must be able to streamline to see to it that issues of contracts are very well understood that in itself determines how you will be remunerated mm -hmm. how you will be able to earn and how the flow of cash will be able to to move within the value chain when it comes to distribution mm -hmm. of course distributors also play a critical role to see to it that issues of funds are able to move from point A to point B because distributors act as intermediaries between the content producer and a broadcaster or a distributor to any kind of form. So it's yes. the payment is heavily dependent on a production, isn't it? It is, we're not talking about, you're yeah. not selling a fast-moving consumer good, for example, that you know that it's going to bring this money into this pocket and people can be paid as a result of it. So payment in the industry is dependent on the productions that are going on, that whether is we're looking one at element. series, films, mm. Mm. telenovelas. That like is that. one element. I can be able to write a script yeah. and sell my script as a product. Yes. And that's why we must be able to move from just focusing only on production. Mm. Production is one element. Mm. We can be able to sell a complete product. We can be able to sell a pre-product. So all these are avenues. Mm. Yes. I see. Let's take a break. Continuing the conversation shortly with uh, Timothy Odiembo Owase, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Film Commission. We are talking about this year's Kalasha International Film and TV Market which is going to be taking place from the 27th to the 30th of March. So the market, 27th to the 30th, and then on the 30th itself, the much coveted Kalasha International Film and TV Awards will be taking place. What's the venue this year? KICC. The KICC. Nairobi. Everything from the 27th is at the KICC. That's very correct. Okay. Free entry. A apart from the screenings, which will be happening at various screening venues. And you'll tell us about that shortly. Indeed. So let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Looking for top tier sheet metal design and fabrication services? Look no further. Duff Engineering in Nairobi offers premium solutions for cable management systems, electrical switchboards, streetlight poles, and more. With cutting edge technology and a commitment to excellence, we ensure your project meets exact specifications. Call Purity Kifinji at 0113-170-654 or email sales at duffengineering.co.ke. Visit us at 11 Kitui Road off Kampala Road, industrial area. Your satisfaction is our priority. Visit www duffengineering.co.ke today. So speaking through in Nairobi this morning, we'll see highs of 28 and lows of 16. 
Sunny in Nakuru with highs of 31 and lows of 15, while in Nyeri, highs of 30 and lows of 16 with sunny conditions. The sun is up as well at 18 in Eldoret, going to highs of 29. And it's a sunny morning in Mombasa at 29, and a sunny morning as well in Malindi at 30. It's sunny at 23 in Kisumu with sunny conditions in Kakamega at 22, going to highs of 34 and lows of 18. Kampala is sunny at 21 with highs of 30 and lows of 20, while Dar es Salaam is sunny at 26 with highs of 33 and lows of 25. We're looking into a cloudy Johannesburg at 16 with highs of 24, while Mogadishu at 31 is mostly sunny. We'll see highs of 34 and highs of 27 in the sunny Addis Ababa at 18. Lagos is cloudy at 26 with highs of 33, and it's mostly cloudy at 25 in Kinshasa with highs of 30 and lows of 24. Some very nice, much fun music. It really took me back to my days, and I can just feel you and get and enjoy the vibes. Spice. I'm a big listener of Spice FM. You play the best music. This is 94.4 Spice All right, FM. So Friday morning. Turns out to be not so busy. Um, we're seeing that reduction greatly on the thicker super highway as folks getting into the city on Kambu Road. Actually, non-existent traffic and a little bit of it on James Gishiru as you get to Waiaki Way, that disappears. And on Huru Highway as you get into the city here and there, you'll find little bits of traffic between the Nyara Stadium roundabout and then the... Um, junction coming in from Bunyala Road. So that's what it looks like. That's the busiest of it. Right now, Landis Road is also starting to pack up as you get towards the Kamkunji roundabout, but Jago Road behaved fantastically this morning. We're still keeping an eye on things because we're still in traffic hour. Let's see what happens as we get closer to the end of it. We'll talk on Spice of MKE on X, hashtag The Situation Room. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4. News with the CEO of the Kenya Film Commission, Timothy Owase, ahead of next week's Kalasha International Film and TV Market. Festival and Awards from the 27th to the 30th of March at the KICC. So the, what the commission is mandated to do among them is promotion of the local film industry through various ways, including facilitating content development, capacity, promotion of local films locally and internationally, and through a resource center, facilitating funding of local films and film projects, of course, subject to availability of funds and all. Let's talk about promotion of Kenyan films to the international market. How do you do this? A very good way and example of how we promote Kenyan content to the international market is the like of hosting Kalasha International Film and TV Market. This is a platform where international buyers have an opportunity to be able to come and access Kenyan content. Remember, the commission cannot be able to take all producers to the international markets, but we are in a position to create a, a platform like Kalasha that will enable buyers of content from other jurisdictions to come and experience the same. At the same time, whenever Kenya participates on the international platform, we create an avenue where local content takes center stage. But of course, the marketing tenets must be put into perspective that any time a producer is coming up with a, a specific content mm. or production, they must be able to undertake their marketing from inception when you start writing your script all the way to distribution you must have a proper business plan indicating how you are going to make return on investment how you are going to promote your film in addition to all other tenets of uh, marketing value chain mm. so the commission is there to give you an enabling environment and our kind of uh, creating that platform is an example of Kalasha International Film and TV Market. And we also enable filmmakers to put their profiles on our creative database, which means anyone, anywhere can be able to log into Kenya Film Commission's website, get into the directory and see who is doing what, what are they capable of doing, what products are available, 
and how they can be accessed mm. yes is the commission does the commission participate and facilitate local industry players to attend other festivals mm. yes across yes. the globe yes we do like which one just to confirm uh last night i dispatched 14 local female producers to the netherlands to participate in a festival where they are going to showcase their works towards the last general election we had film data productions taking place and the production were focusing on female uh, governors who were campaigning then mm. to be elected in office and these stories were produced and now we have actually taken the same stories to the international scene so that these producers can be able to network exchange learn and also get opportunities to be able to sell remember film is a, a change machine or mm. engine it is able to influence behavior it's able to give us an opportunity to learn and as we do this we are able to change a lot of perspectives mm. so as these filmmakers go out there they are going to get their fellow experienced producers they will learn from them they'll be able to come back and put into practice whatever they will have learned mm. so that is just one example of what the commission is doing mm. uh, we were able to take about 20 local filmmakers to south africa during disco so that these local producers can be able to go and showcase pitch and also exhibit what they have to offer take me through so what this, you've done this is uh, part of our ongoing mm. uh, initiatives to see to it that we are acting as a real catalyst for growth in the local film industry in practical terms mm -hmm. let's say the example of the netherlands where these ladies yes. went to mm -hmm. last night mm. what did kfc do KFC. Did the film commission now reach out to the netherlands agencies i mean what what exactly did you do kfc has actually facilitated facilitated the participation of these particular filmmakers in terms of registration their travel accommodation the kind of meetings that they are going to to have the commission is going to ensure that we 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 pay the fees that are required for them to be able to effectively participate in this particular festival and by doing that our intention is to continue building capacity so that when these 14 come back they'll have gained more insights on what they can be able to do better than where they are to be able to move to the next level mm. and beyond that the commission is also seeing to it that we are able to fund productions locally by the introduction of the film empowerment program which is purely a program that the commission put in place to see to it that we have more productions coming up last year we were able to support 22 projects and 22 projects employing about 2500 people within the industry and 400 interns for us this is just a show that with proper injection of investment into the film industry we can be able to do a lot and we can be able to add value to our exchequer hmm. yes it's interesting that you say this so i wonder what kind of connection then is there between education in kenya mm -hmm. and the industry uh we is there liaising that takes place or even uh, those connections where we say look this is what the industry requires mm -hmm. are we making sure that there is at least learning that takes place mm -hmm. pre-industry entry so that we can be sure of you know that we're putting in folks who are trained into mm -hmm. an industry mm -hmm. as opposed to on the later side of things sending them away for training mm -hmm. Does the education system boost the industry and is there, you know, communication between the two? Education is very fundamental in the society. And I must say that with CBC, we consider education as very critical. And that's why the commission, as part of its program, we, are introdu we have introduced what we call the establishment of film clubs in schools. Mm -hmm. The commission is currently executing film clubs in schools through a film outreach program and here we set up these clubs we ensure that teachers are sensitized on matters screen industries beyond that we also provide the established clubs with the 
basic equipment so that from that young age we are able to introduce youngsters to the facilities that they are likely to be using when they grow up as far as production is concerned. So but, that, okay. but more fundamentally, mm. the best training in our sector is through experience mm. and that's why the more productions we undertake in the country the more opportunities for training that take mm -hmm. place because it's purely practical based sure. kind of training that we needed to see mm. yes i get what you're saying so are we saying that the so the space for theory then is is limited because you need to it, okay somebody's going to hold a camera mm -hmm. should they not have seen or heard about it before are we saying essentially that you know you're going to get engaged with it when you see it for the first time but before that should you not have some fundamental knowledge or understanding if that is the area that you want to go into i, I think it's also critical for us to note that today 80 percent of our universities are providing film education mm -hmm. meaning training in uh, institutions of higher learning is already there mm -hmm. and we encourage our youngsters to be able to take through the academic route mm. so that they are able to get the real insights and us at the commission we are encouraging university dons to actually undertake more research in this particular area in the coming financial year i want to run competitions where professors will be able to come up with the specific papers and this will be able to help the country in terms of what are some of the policy directions that we are supposed to take mm. and also it will help us to come up with new insights which will be able to challenge the way we think the way we do things to improve the industry mm. yes. i have to ask this question mm. if indeed as you say 80 percent of our universities provide film education do we have productions mm. that we know emanate from these institutions and which we can then say is a clear indication that the education that is actually being taught is actually producing people who are contributing positively to this industry? The answer is yes, and that's why, from my introductory remarks on Kalasha, I said I even have a category within the Kalasha Awards mm. that where education institutions, we have student categories, and the aim is to see the caliber and the kind of production that are emanating from these schools. Mm. Yes, so they are there. There's this, I'm going back to this subject of the remunerations and the guilds that you mentioned must exist. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. We say they, essentially we're saying, if they exist, they're not as strong as they could be. It, it, it almost sounds counterintuitive. I am in this industry and I would like to be remunerated appropriately. Uh, I would like a remuneration that's appropriate and commensurate with my abilities. Mm -hmm. And yet we are unable to get ourselves into a union that would enable us to actually achieve this end. Especially now that we can see that this industry is actually generating money. I think what we need to focus on is the fact that we have guilds, but have these guilds uh, resulted into what we would like to see? The answer is no. And that's why as the commission we are strongly coming out to support the existing guilds and in the new legislative uh, proposal we are saying that there should be a film federation as an umbrella body that will be championing all these elements as far as welfare is concerned for the film industry and of course government cannot dictate how much you should be paid there is a no. basic remuneration rate that one should be able to be paid as a minimum but we are saying within this specialized uh, industry we are saying that through guilds we can be able to set our specific rate through a red card actually mm. where i'm going with this is i'm looking at the creative industry and i'm thinking of the music industry mm. it's like people in this industry are constantly getting shortchanged I, I mean, well, yes, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm putting it as bluntly as I can. Mm. They produce all this joy and happiness and entertainment and everything else that people enjoy. Mm. And if you look at the history and the lives of any of these people, especially when they mm. now move on in years, they seem to be guaranteed a life of misery and poverty as they move along. I don't think that's what we would like to see. Yes. And that's why we are championing and putting a premium to this industry. I think the creative industry is the best industry anyone can belong because this is an industry where you are able to undertake your your skills offer your skills in a manner that you know the best and that's why all we are saying is that we like to
champion the strong guilds in the industry mm. that will be able to see to it that filmmakers or practitioners within the industry earn what is rightfully theirs. Mm. And this should not be dictated by government. This should come from within. And that's why guilds are very critical. How many guilds do we have so far? Like Currently, an example. in the country and within the industry, we have so many guilds. Mm. And that's why we are proposing that we should have a film federation as an umbrella body that will be able to amalgamate all these guilds into uh, an umbrella board that will be able to champion their cause. Today we have a producers guild which focuses on producers. We have actors guild which should be able to take care of all actors and we also we also have KFTPA which takes care of all other practitioners. All these formations from where I sit mm. I would like to see them as strong as they should be so that they are able to champion the rights of their their people. Mm. And again to respond to city it should be noted that the film industry is not different from manufacturing, from agriculture or any other. If somebody is employed in a manufacturing organization, what happens is that they are guiding laws, labor laws. Mm. The film industry is not immune to this. We should be able to focus and see to it that we comply as practitioners within the industry on all laws of the land. Mm. Yes. Are there returns for... Okay. Mm. Let's start with... Are there regulations for somebody who is really, really interested in venturing into production industry, the film industry in this country? Mm -hmm. um, they want to be executive producers, they want to be financing just productions and making money out of it. Mm -hmm. Are there regulations that they need to abide by? Of course, there are laws in the country mm. that uh, anyone operating within this particular film industry must be able to abide by. One, any time you want to tell your story, you want to go and film in a given jurisdiction, you must be able to, uh, to acquire a, a filming license. You must also be able to utilize an accredited filming agent. These are requirements in the country that one must be able to abide by. Beyond that, you must be able to set up a company like any other, register through the normal channels of company registration, mm -hmm. so that you are running a business like any other in the country. Just to assure you, yesterday I hosted insurance firms as well as banking institutions mm. and the essence of hosting these institutions was to sensitize them about the business of film because I'm looking at the welfare of the film industry. I understand banks are in business of credit and risk while insurance are uh, in business of risk. Film requires insurance at any given time mm. i would like to see to it that the practitioners within the film industry value chain are insured the equipment insured and also the situations for example you are going to masai mara to shoot your film you had planned that you will undertake this work in two days and within those two days you find that there is storm and you are not able to execute your product. Mm. How does insurance come in so that you are covered on this? Mm. So all these fundamentals must be put into perspective. Mm. Mm. Do Kenyan audiences consume the product of the industry to levels that are acceptable? The, we can do better. Of course, when you look at the international perspective, you find that most audiences are looking for stories that they can be able to resonate with. Mm -hmm. And Kenyan audiences want to consume content they can be able to connect with. And that's why you find that when you look at our local free-to-air scenario, mm -hmm. you'll find that most programs are actually geared towards our own local stories. Mm -hmm. And indeed, to answer you, Kenyans are looking for their own stories. And I encourage all our producers mm -hmm. to not be very complicated but to focus on our own stories and tell them as simple as we can is that currently and happening or it I is mean it, it, it is currently happening mm -hmm. and i believe as we progress and as we champion and support the film industry in terms of funding we'll see more stories coming out mm. and that's how we'll be able to position kenya mm. as an ideal destination for storytelling so essentially what we'll be looking at is that so if the, if as films are done mm. i mean because we're looking across board here mm. tv series mm. telenovelas mm. film etc right essentially what we are saying is that the cinemas in kenya mm. should be full of kenyans watching kenya's productions essentially 
as a first step before these Correct. films even now find their place regional level for regional showing global level global showing we're saying that you should then even be able to be on your digital platforms purchasing here in kenya a kenyan production and that would be like the first place where you want to see the population of viewership be primarily that's from kenya. fundamental we we need to see more kenyans consuming their own local stories mm. and that's where it begins but we must also appreciate the fact that for a very long time we as kenyans we have perceived this industry not as a professional industry and that's why most parents never encourage their children to take a course in this particular line mm. anytime you talked about uh, storytelling you will be looked at as, as somebody who does not have direction <laughs> and that's why we we must be able to appreciate and see to it that this is a profession like any other and encourage our own parents grandparents and so on and so forth when they see us on screen and realize that indeed this is my son whom i'm seeing and he's earning from my from 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 storytelling mm -hmm. then that acceptance is there and when we have that kind of acceptance and when we have masses consuming our own local content then the region will also follow the international market will also follow and remember east africa alone has about 600 million swahili speakers which is a huge mm. market mm. with our stories being consumed in kenya they can expand into the region and we can be able to make a lot of resources out mm. of this mm. yes. so let's talk about distribution then Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. How established is the local distribution industry for people who are taking mm -hmm. productions and marketing them within the region and internationally? Okay, when we talk about distribution, ultimately this is a marketing component. I must appreciate and uh, admit that we are limited in terms of screening facilities. Mm -hmm. In the country, we only have 27 cinemas, mm -hmm. and these cinemas are in Nairobi. Mombasa and Kisumu and yet we have 47 counties what we are encouraging uh, the public I'm encouraging investors to actually see this as an opportunity that we need to set up these facilities in counties let's just look at it just in a very basic manner mm. that we would like to have at least one cinema in each county this will give us room to have our locals access our stories and that they can be able to pay uh, for what they are able to access but without the screening facilities that becomes a challenge and that's why government is deliberately putting incentives in place for investors to be able to set up these facilities because we would like this industry to be largely private sector driven and when you do that we'll be able to open up space for many more mm. yes make a case for mm. somebody who would like to invest in no somebody who hears this and they're like okay mm. uh, why should i open a cinema in nyeri why, sh why should I open a cinema in Machakos? That's a very good example you are giving. Mm. And it's interesting that I'll shortly be launching a cinema hall at the Danikimati University in Nyeri. What we have done as the commission is that we have established a film hub in Nyeri. Mm. We have also gone ahead and in set up a, a 250-seater cinema theater at the same facility to just see to it that the locals are able to access this facility utilize the film hub for production purposes and editing and all that then beyond that on the consumer side to see to it that you can be able to come and premiere your film in this facility we can have locals coming in to watch films and also spend some money mm. as far as this is concerned but when it comes to investment my rallying call is that content is king at all levels and all Kenyans want to actually watch stories that's why today on sundays when you go to the cbd in nairobi you will find almost each and every young person with a camera trying to create something mm. so content is on very high demand and given that because of technology we have access to internet we have smartphones we are able to consume content through all these particular facilities so all we are saying is that we, as much as we have all these gadgets in place, cinema business will never die. Mm. We still need to have that experience. And as the commission, I'm calling on anyone who 
is ready to partner with us, that we can be able to run a, a very big campaign where we are rallying Kenyans to go back to cinema so that we have a screening culture in the country. And with this, we'll be able to rally masses back to cinema halls other than other aspects. I know not so many young people want to wear a tie between 8 and 5. Mm. They'll rather work between 5 p.m. and 5 a.m. Mm. without anyone supervising them because they know what they want to achieve. So it's my rallying call that we actually champion these youngsters to tell their stories, do what they love, and increase productivity. Mm. Mm. Timothy, let's now circle back into next week, what's happening next week, right? For people who may have joined the conversation late as we close the conversation, from between the 27th and the 30th, the Kalasha International Film and TV Market. Very well. For the Kalasha International Film and TV Market, which is opening up from the 27th to 30th of March, I'm calling on all viewers and listeners that uh, you can be part of the market and all you need to do is to go to the Kalasha website, register, and registration will cost you, uh, participation will cost you 1,000 shillings for the three days. And for the Kalasha Awards, we'll only admit those on invitations only. But for the market, there is a lot to win. So come and be part of this market. Mm. For student participation, you don't have to pay anything. We'll accredit you, but just make sure that you sign up on the website so that you are able to participate in this massive event. Okay. Yes. And KTN will be screening the awards. Karibu sana KTN, mm. and uh, as always, we're always happy to partner with KTN on this particular venture. Very good. Yes. Timothy Owase is the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Film Commission. Talking about the Kalasha International Film and TV Markets next week at KICC. It's 9 a.m. Ubaga. The Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union will today hold a planned demonstration to push the government to act on their demands. The medics intend to start the procession at 9 a.m. from sorry from KNH, Ngong Road, Ministry of Health, Parliament, National Treasury, and subsequently to the Council of Governors in Westlands. This comes amid the ongoing strike by doctors across the country, which has paralyzed services in public hospitals and failed talks with the government. A company alleged to be selling fake fertilizer in the country has threatened to sue the Kenya Bureau of Standards for maligning its reputation. Silica Booster Limited, known as SBL Sinovate Manufacturers, has termed the accusations by Kerbs as a deliberate attempt to tame their name based on lies. The company's CEO Joe Kariuki defended the accusations that Kerbs never certified their product, saying they were issued a certificate for their products on January 28, 2023. His cabs MD Estangari. Our investigations revealed that SBL Innovate Manufacturers Limited engaged in the misuse of the cabs standardization mark on a product that was not certified by Kenya Bureau of Standards. This event comes as President William Ruta has warned fertilizer cartels that action will be taken against them, further admitting that there is a shortage of fertilizer in the country. Those who sell fake seeds or fake fertilizer face the music that they deserve. We have arrested some of the characters who want to take advantage of our fertilizer supply program. Fertilizer we were expecting early this month will be arriving by the 10th of April because of the challenges we have in the Red Sea. But we have looked for alternative sources of fertilizer. State Department for Broadcasting and Telecommunications PS Edward Kisiangani has been sued by lawyers and journalists for monopolizing government advertisements. They've asked the High Court to quash Kisiangani's directive to restrict all government advertising in television to KBC, saying it's wrong and flouts the law on government information. Police in Nairobi have arrested 24 fake pharmacists and shut down 30 illegal pharmaceutical outlets across the city as part of an operation led by officials from the poison 
poisons and pharmacies board targeting illegal chemists. PPB inspector Tom Wangi said the apprehended individuals will be arraigned and charged for offences under the PBP Act, which prohibits operating a pharmaceutical business without a license from the board. Journalist Rita Tinina will be laid to rest on the 27th of March in Naro County. The cottage will leave Omash Funeral Home in Akuru on the same day. Funeral arrangement meetings are being held at the All Saints Cathedral from 5.30 p.m. ahead of a requiem mass which will be held at the Holy Family Basilica on the 25th of March. And finally, KRA has announced that housing deductions for the government's affordable housing project take effect from March 19th. The tax collector directed employers to deduct 1.5% from employees' gross salaries and remit it, together with a marching contribution of 1.5% for each employee. Further, all other individuals who earn income in Kenya are required to remit 1.5% of their gross in- income as housing levy to KRA when signing the law. President William Ruto described it as a major step towards enabling low-income earners to own houses. And in the international scene, President Yuwerium Sivani has appointed his son, General Mohozi Kanairugaba, as the new Chief of Defense Forces. He replaces General Wilson Bari, who was appointed Minister of State for Trade in the new cabinet reshuffle. General Mohozi has been serving as his father's senior presidential advisor in charge of special operations. That's the Newswire. I'm Lea Ubaga. Spice FM, Nairobi. Okay, we're coming out of traffic hour not too far from now, but uh, looking at what's happening on the roads, you're not going to be stuck anywhere anytime today. Uhuru Highway is busy getting into the city, in and out, beehive of activity, things like that, but actually you won't get stuck. Um, on the thicker super highway, as you're coming in just past survey, so that's that hold up, uh, because you know you're done with service lanes and you're going into a tunnel, you'll be out of it in no time, and then into the CBD, in no problem. Are you coming off of Ngong Road? You're also fine here. Langach Road looks good. Southern Bypass movement here and there, getting into the weekend all all these trucks are finding their way um, on the bypass out of the city. So, you know, be patient. You'll be fine. It's not a hold up, so that's okay. On the eastern bypass, that traffic ended. So I'm just telling you how you can go wherever you want to go this morning. No wahala. All right. We're keeping an eye on things. Let's see what happens when we come out of it in about half hour or so. We'll talk on Spice of MKE on X hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. The only way Usenim to start Investment your- Limited is inviting you to participate in the ownership of Serenity Springs in Lynette. Own, go, build, live there. Own, you can sell it later. It's appreciating in value. In fact, since the moment they decided this thing is 1.499 million shillings, aye, the value just went up immediately. It's only that now, of course. Uh, so, in a car, in a car. In a car. In a car to Ivo Ivo. Mm. All right. Where is Serenity Springs City? Lanette. Where is Lanette? Mm. Nakuru County. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Very good. And where exactly is this geographical location? Mm. Well, it's on the road to Al Kalao. As you leave Nakuru, mm. when you're heading towards Nairobi, mm-hmm. just, just as you leave Nakuru, just, yes, turning on your left, yes. that road, as you say very correctly, takes you woo, up some scenic scenic yes, hills down to hills and mm. so forth but along the way 
and you see very many wonderful things. Yeah. More international airport, mm. national defense university, mm. more forces academy. Mm. All these are in Lanet, by the way. Mm -hmm. And as you move further, you will eventually get to Serenity Springs. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Oh, figure hapo. Hapo, hapo. They say if you go with 1.499 million shillings today, Titan Yako, start transferring. Hapo, hapo. But if you just pay 10%, you can clear within 30 days. And if you cannot clear within 30 days, CT, what can you do? Well, you can clear within three months. Uh -huh. mm. Or six. Or, or nine. Or twelve. Hey. Mm. Surely. <laughs> Mambo ni kuongea. Mm. And that's why there's a number. 0725 000 222. That's 0725 000 222. That's an SMS. No, it's a call or WhatsApp number. Yes, yes. You can WhatsApp them from wherever you are. If you're in the diaspora and you'd like to get in touch with them, diaspora at username.co.ke. That's diaspora at username.co.ke. The SMS number is 20321. Just SMS the word plot. To two zero three two one plot. They'll call you back. They'll say, Una taka plot. <laughs> Tuko nayo. Mingi. Mingi. <laughs> it's time to have our Health Friday conversation. And today, we want to focus on a condition known as multiple sclerosis. We are joined by the founder and chairman of the Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation, Isaac Kasioka. Isaac, good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you for the interview. This is the hot seat of Kenya's biggest conversation, and we want to learn a lot more about multiple sclerosis. To welcome you first to the conversation, City will give you the day's proverb. Listen to the proverb, and then you'll give us your interpretation of that proverb. Yes. Right. Without effort, no effort. Sorry, it's harvest actually. Mm. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Without effort, no harvest will be abundant. Well, my understanding for that proverb is that uh, everything has to be done with a certain degree of effort. Because if you sit down and wait, nothing will come to your way. In a way, uh, that's what I understand by the proverb. Mm. You have to put in work for you to reap. Otherwise, when you sit down, no work will come. Mm. And that is uh, the slogan which guides Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first, tell us what is multiple sclerosis? We've heard about it in some times. We hear MS, we see, but I bet you not many people actually know what this is. All right, uh, MS. Uh, allow me to call it MS in short, mm -hmm. because uh, for me, multiple sclerosis is quite a mouthful. Mm -hmm. So MS is a degenerative disorder, whereby. The nervous system is attacked by itself. Health, health cells of the central nervous system are attacked. And uh, you find yourself uh, walking in a funny way. As I usually say, walking in italics. It's that in is italics. <laughs> yeah, you stagger, <laughs> when, <laughs> you stagger when you're walking. Mm. And also, you look like a drunkard. Mm. Basically, 100% of the... Symptoms of MS are uh, of a drunkard. Mm. One is uh, your lips are discolored. That is one. Two, you walk while staggering. Mm. Three, uh, your, your speech is sluggard in a way. Mm. Uh, there are so many. Four, your eyes are always red. Five, your eyes are always watery. So in a way, it is, uh, it is just a uh, mlevi. For lack of a better word. Yeah, people actually, will see a multiple sclerosis person and think, we are malaria. Actually, I remember a day I went to church myself. Uh, and then after getting to church, uh, I have not mentioned the church, neither will I mention <laughs> the name. Uh, I was told, uh, the pastor told me later on, far much later on, he was asked by a uh, quote-unquote Mzee Wakanisa. Kwani you allow walevo in kanisa squeeze? Because uh, even when I walked in here, mm. you saw, uh, I, I, usually I'm never very 100% stable. Mm. So uh, there are some things which I know in, uh, in my mind that I should not do. So uh, when the pastor was asked, Kwani mnakubali walevo in kanisa? He texted back to them there and told him, Uyo mtu, siyo mlevi. Uyo mtu, akonda condition plani. Mm. He told me about it, 
And then I was so happy that the pastor defended me. Uh, there are many places we've gone. I've gone personally. Leave alone me. Other members of the foundation have gone. Now, the first interpretation is that uh, you are drunk. Mm. Otherwise, if I stand here and tell you I personally hate alcohol, personally. Actually, I cannot sit in the same room with a drunkard because that, you, you know, the smell of alcohol, mm. the cheap one, mm. actually the cheap one now, mm. because the expensive one uh, is not, uh, it's not irritating. Mm. I hate, I can send someone taking a cigarette, like a kubuta cigar, mm. like very far, like 50 meters away from me. Mm. I can sense, and those are things I hate. As like you said, it's a condition where the nervous system attacks itself. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What it means is that uh, it's autoimmune. Autoimmune is whereby you can relate this with autopilot. If you've gone uh, into a plane, which I believe you've gone, uh, th there are times when the plane gets to a cruising level. The pilot just puts out a pilot and then uh, the plane goes by itself. Mm. So autoimmune is uh, loosely interpreted as a situation whereby your immunity is very high. Mm. And now the nerves or rather the, the cells see it as a threat. So they start attacking it. And this, in return, causes something called demyelination. Mm -hmm. There's a, I don't know, uh, there's a report I'll send you later on, uh, whereby the nerves assume, uh, okay, this is not a good example. Uh, a live wire, a red wire. Mm. So not just the, just the red wire and the white wire, wire, the black blue. wire. Mm. Black and the other one is blue, mm. the other one is yellow. Yeah, now let me go, let me go with the red one, which is uh, the live one. Now remove the covering of the red one, mm -hmm. and then remove the covering of the black one. What will happen yeah, next? The same. It's you, a shock. You do not know which is which, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which, light, is, which is neutral. Yes. They, are, they are the same, so you'll touch any. Yep. So basically, autoimmune uh, causes uh, demyelination. A uh, demyelination is the act of removing the covering of the, the nerves mm -hmm. at the spinal cord. Uh, whereby the spinal cord is part of the central nervous system. Uh, when the covering is removed, uh, information flows slowly, and that causes the staggering gait. Mm -hmm. You go staggering. Uh, before a message uh, from your brain, you see the brain controls everything. Yeah. Before a message from the brain to your mind yeah. is the left foot, mm -hmm. to your feet reaches, uh, if it is Eric uh, already, uh, Eric has walked, mm. but Isaac is still the, the, the message is move. still going, so he hasn't moved yet. Wow. So now, yeah, uh, when he moves, before you see the message goes in bits, mm. the first bit gets there, and then uh, basically, the second, before the second bit gets there, you stagger. Okay, how early on do you know that uh, somebody has MS? Oh, Ali, is, uh, you see, MS is, uh, is, is diagnosed based on elimination. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, I should give my personal story, personal example. Uh, MS, I was first diagnosed with arthritis. Then it was ruled out. I was diagnosed with, uh, I remember a doctor. I still am not going to mention. Uh, who told me, who can go to now, mm -hmm. when someone tells you you have a disease for the elderly, <laughs> what have they told you, ideally? So there is no age which you can be diagnosed with MS. Any age is, uh, you can be diagnosed mm -hmm. anytime. And also it depends on your, your activity of going to the hospital. Okay. Your Tell initiative. us your story, Isaac. My story, uh, my story, my story is very, very weird. Uh, and funny, you know, because uh, back in 2019, I started staggering before I even get to 2019. Let's start with 2000. 2000, I was in the, I come from Chitwande. That's my home, mm -hmm. a place called Kambo. Mm. 
back in Kambo, I was being, I uh, had uh, eye problems. But when I go to the hospital, see, you are, you are, uh, you are diagnosed, you are measured. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue to say, the boy is okay. There is no problem. Because ideally, I could see uh, up to date. My left eye has an issue. If you look at me closely, you realize that uh, my left eye is kind of smaller than the right eye. Mm -hmm. But I have a very good eyesight. On both? No, on the, on the right one. On the right eye. <laughs> on the zero one. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I used to go to the hospital. Then uh, I could read all of them from the biggest to the smallest. Mm. From, from the longest distance to the shorter distance. Because mm. you see they measure based on uh, the distance. Mm. And then you are told cover your right eye, cover your left eye. Uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the problem disappeared. I was given some drugs which which looked like a toothpaste. Mm -hmm. I would put inside the eye, like literally inside. Mm -hmm. So now uh, that was 2000. The problem just disappeared. I don't know where it went to. I don't know whether it was a mess or it was not. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in 2004, it recurred. The same thing, repeat, repeat. How old were you? Uh, 2004. 2000, I was uh, eight. Mm -hmm. I was in class one. Uh, then 2004, of course, I was born in G2. Mm. So 2004, I was uh, 12. 12. So now the same problem with the record. Then I went to high school, Machakos Boys. Mm. Uh, Machakos Boys, I suffered the first neurological uh, illness. That is uh, uh, Bell's palsy. Mm -hmm. my, 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 my lip. Mm -hmm. I don't know the English word, mm -hmm. so you'll forgive me. I mm -hmm. to the... To the right. Uh, to the right. You see, the left will be weaker. Mm -hmm. So if the right is strong, it will pull it. Mm -hmm. So... Mm, so you had Bell's palsy now. <laughs> yes, that was uh, in Form 2. Mm. That was 2009, mm. 2009. Uh, I had Bell's palsy. I remember I went to, to, to Aga Khan. I was given drugs. And uh, preps, uh, I think you know what preps means. Uh, the evening classes. Mm. I remember walking into a class. Then I staggered into the class. Mm. Uh, the teacher was like, you see, there's usually the teacher on duty. Mm. Was like, ah, mm. my friend, I'm sober. And then uh, I was given a beating of a lifetime. Anyway, that is a situation I'll never forget. And because then they you thought that this form two is drunk, is drunk mm. at and prep time. At prep time. Right. And you, if you know the history of form twos, mm. Form 2s are assumed to be the rowdiest students, the troublemakers <laughs> in, a, in a school. So you can imagine the perception which the teacher had already. Mm. So I was beaten. Anyway, I was beaten mm. a lot. And then uh, I was released. Uh, when they saw Sinuki Pombe, mm. you're not smelling alcohol, you're just okay. Because that time I can had given me... I don't know how many tablets. I was taking more than 10 in mm -hmm. the evening only. Mm -hmm. They explained to you what those tablets were for? Yeah, they explained to my brother. I was a minor. Mm -hmm. They explained to my brother. So now uh, that was uh, from two. Then uh, somewhere in the university. I went to the university. Uh, my girlfriend. I woke up with pain. Mm -hmm. You see, in all joints. I woke up with pain. Okay, you so I woke up with pain. We went to an hospital along Langata Road. I used to live in Rongai. Uh, the same, the same story. Repeat. Uh, there is no illness. We, I was done a full hemogram. Uh, then uh, I was told you are not sick. You only have malaria, which will clear clear out within a short time. Then I went home. Of course, I went back to the house. Then uh, in, two, no, in 2019 is when the symptom of staggering K 
kicked in. Mm. Mm. So I noticed when you draw a line, say uh, back in college, in the university, for us to measure whether you are drunk or you are sober, we will tell you to walk along a line of uh, a line of tiles. Mm. So I noticed I could not walk along that line. Mm. And then I'm like, am I drunk? I know I'm not. I have not taken anything. I have not taken anything, but I can't walk anyway. So when I was in the house, that time I'd moved to Waiakewe. Uh, my brother, a senior of mine, called me, Akanembia, come. Come, we meet in town. Then when we, meet in we met in town, he told me, let me record you. Walk along this side. So you see, I not told him the problem. Mm. But him himself had observed mm. by himself. But he had not told me still. Mm. He told me, let me record you uh, as you walk along this line. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I saw how severe it was. Mm. It was very severe. Uh, I, could not, I could not maintain myself along that line of tiles. So uh, I was taught to go to the hospital. And as I said earlier on, a mess is based on uh, elimination. Mm. It's a disability and it's based on elimination. Mm. So now uh, I was done, I, was, I went to see a neurologist because definitely the, the doctors mm. are not helping me in any way. Mm. When you go to see a general physician, XID, mm. so I went to see a neurologist uh, somewhere in Apail who told me, go get a uh, no, a lower lumbar scan or MRI. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I went to get a lower lumbar MRI. And uh, there's a doctor we call Dr. Google. Mm. <laughs> Dr. Google mm. is the best doctor. <laughs> I can tell you for free. Mm. Actually, Dr. Google diagnosed me. Mm. So uh, I go, I, I get an MRI for lower lumbar. I take back the report. But before I got, uh, I go to City Shuttle. Mm. When I just entered, what do you do first? You start Googling. Mm. What is this? They have written the report mm. because it's not sealed anyway. Yeah. So you can open it. So uh, I researched. Uh, they had not written a mess yet. So I took to the doctor. After talking to the doc doctor, he sends me back. He tells me now, go get a brain MRI, mm -hmm. my friend. Uh, that is the worst place to be in a MRI machine. Mm. You feel the, ma the magnetic field flowing in your body in a way. So now I went to get an MRI, a brain MRI. Uh, they wanted here with contrast. Mm. I don't know, uh, something they injected in my in so my brain. Mm. Yeah, so now uh, the report came out and my, 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 my scan, the printouts, were like uh, they had Christmas lights, as in they had mm. white white things. <laughs> 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 they had white white things. You see, in a, in an MRI in the printout, you'll see the oval you'll thing. The your brain. brain. Yes. Yep. But now my brain, if you look at my tag, uh, I've explained it. Mm. A normal person has a black printout. Mm. But uh, mine was white. That's why I call it Christmas. Mm. So now it had white, white things, mm. which uh, later the neuro interpreted they were lesions mm -hmm. in a way. So now uh, I was very, very afraid. Mm. And uh, after I've got out of the MRI, MRI plus, that is a PCA Kikuyu. Kuingia City Shato Ivi. What do I do first again? Google. Go to Dr. Google. Dr. Google. Dr. Google. Mm. It is written there possible multiple sclerosis. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, then I go to Dr. Kwasa. Mm. Uh, Kwasa tells me, my friend, you should be in the hospital right now. And then I'm like, am I dying? Mm. I don't want to die. Mm. <laughs> Of course, no one wants to die, even the pastors. They don't want to die. Mm. <laughs> they should tell us uh, heaven is beautiful, things of that sort, but they don't want to go there. <laughs> so now uh, I get into the vehicle, 
and I jumped straight to Google, what is multiple sclerosis? No, I first called my one of my sisters in Kamaliza, what is demyelination? Hmm. Uh, she is a medical student. She told me demyelination is whereby the myelin sheath is removed. Mm -hmm. Have you ever freaked out? Mm -hmm. I freaked out, my friend. I thought uh, you've been reading Kasioka, you've been seeing Kasioka in the streets, <laughs> but now Kasioka is going. Mm. Where are you going? My friend, uh, and then I, I was lucky enough, I googled again, actually what gave me your encouragement hope, hope or encouragement is uh, I, I googled somewhere, someone uh, in the UK said they were diagnosed at 8 mm -hmm. and they are now 60 and they are still kicking on. Mm. So that gave me hope in a way. Mm. So I, I talked to Dr. Kwasa. Dr. Kwasa writes for me a list of 10 hospitals. Uh, 10 hospitals and then uh, they were the, the expensive hospitals. Mm. And then uh, number 11 and I'm like, uh, sorry, I'm like the 10 hospitals he has written, I can't afford any. Mm. Even uh, consultation only. Mm. I can't afford. So uh, number 11, he wrote KNH. Mm -hmm. I know now, right now the the health situation is shaky, mm -hmm. but uh, number 11 he wrote KNH, and I was like, I can afford that one. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, when I was like, I can afford that one, I went to that one. For a week, uh, he wrote a prescription of uh, infusion of solomedrol, which is like a resuscitation. Mm -hmm. For MS, you see, MS does not have medication, mm. so there is resuscitation mm. whereby you are. I was worse mm. mm. than I am right now. Mm. So uh, I went to KNH. That was uh, 2022 because uh, 20, my 2019 was end of 2019, mm. but 2022. I don't know whether you know something called denial. Mm. Denial. Mm. You don't want to accept that you are at a certain place. Mm. You want to live in a house of uh, rent, <coughs> 50,000, but your salary is 10. 10K. Mm. You see, that is not adding up in a way. <laughs> so uh, ideally, I got out. I went to KNH. And then at KNH, I was lucky. Ideally, uh, people with uh, autoimmune conditions, mm. they have their own words or uh, this area con the chronic conditions. Mm. You see MS is chronic. Mm. These chronic conditions, they have their own words. So I was like, I was not put in the, I was asked, do you want to go to the private wing or the general uh, ward, mm. general public ward? I was like, uh, I took a back first before I was like, even the private wing, can you afford? That's a question. Or, do you have the money? Mm. So I went to the public one. So I, I expected to be put. You see, there is a picture that is painted of Kenich. Mm. There is a picture of uh, Uko Utomia. Mm. And me, I can I can say my stars aligned because uh, I was put in a karum, mm. a kabet sita. Mm. <laughs> so as I call it, because it had a tap, who were only three in the room. Uh, it was a like semi-private, I right. can call it. Right. So now uh, I was put there. They used to administer solimetro in the evening mm. and in the morning. So when someone says me, like now, Eric, I can tell you, mm. when I'm seated, the way I'm seated, mm. you can't tell if I have a mess mm. or not, mm. if I'm suffering or not. Mm. Wait until I stand. Mm. When I stand is when you see a nyawe, there's, there's something with Kasioka. Mm. There's an issue. Mm. So uh, after that, uh, I got home. Uh, I went back home after the week, the seven days. I was very strong. I was running around. Okay, right now I can't run. Mm. But I was running around. Uh, and then uh, I went uh, I went to, to the countryside. No, I went back to my home. That is why I mm. But later on in, in uh, 2022, May, 
on October I went home my my home home now mm. uh, I went home I had something I was doing there then after going home I realized uh, MS in a way is affected by extremes mm. that is either extreme cold or extreme Heats. hot heat mm. because even my first symptom came out when I was living in Mombasa ah. so now uh, I realized the mess is affected by either heat or cold or cold <coughs> and then I was stressed by someone with other MS people who, who joined me the other MS people mm -hmm. uh, we we I got the push how many people actually Eric I can tell you today there are so many MS patients, but they have technically given up mm. in life because you are suffering from a condition which no one understands. People don't understand it. Yeah, no one, no one will ever get it. Yeah. Mm. So now uh, many people have sought to like just give up in life because. Uh, there's nothing they can do. Mm. Now so, you'll tell us about the foundation. All right. You'll tell us about what's happening in the country with other people who have MS. And then I will also tell you about my giving up if yep. I register as a, as a PWD. Indeed. It's 26 minutes to 10. Our guest this morning for our Health Friday conversation is Isaac Kasioka. He's a founder and chair of the Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation. He's so far just been telling us about his own journey through diagnosis, act act denial, acceptance of multiple sclerosis as a condition that he has and we'll be continuing this conversation shortly time for that break Duff Engineering in Nairobi offers more than just sheet metal services. From powder coating to laser cutting on metal and wood, we've got you covered. With state-of-the-art machines and a dedication to excellence, we ensure top quality results every time. Contact Purity Kithinji at 0113-170-654 or email sales at duffengineering.co.ke. Visit us at 11 Kitui Road off Kampala Road Industrial Area. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Visit www duffengineering.co.ke now. All right, we're out of traffic hour this morning. It doesn't look like it's going to take us much longer. Um, the situation on the roads today, actually very good if we're talking about very little movement now. Thicker Superhighway, clear, clear, clear. Just a little bit left on Kambu Road, coming towards Muthaiga Square. Uh, but apart from that, in and out of the city, no problem. Hopefully it stays that way for most of the day, right? Let's talk through the day, however. Spice FM, KE on X. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. MS. Isaac Kasioka is our guest. He's the founder of the Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation. He says it's a condition where your nervous system attacks itself. Mm. An autoimmune system. So then, I mean, obviously you've gone through this experience on your own and you were then diagnosed, one would assume. You mm. were diagnosed with MS. Mm -hmm. What happened after that for you to decide that you wanted to um, create awareness about this? And what led to that? Uh, basically, what led to my decision is, uh, as I told you, uh, I was diagnosed, I was given internal hospitals. And I was like, I can't afford any of them. Mm. And I remember, Isaac is jobless. Mm. No job, no nothing. Mm. So now, uh, that is 2022. Mm. Isaac is uh, just there. Mm. We can't do anything. Mm. Had you finished so, university? Yeah, I finished in 2016. What, what did you study? I did a Bachelor of Cooperative Business Finance. Not that I understand what that is. <laughs> I am an accountant mm. by profession. See? Mm. And then I have an MBA. Now, see, thoroughly educated man, mm -hmm. yeah. and you couldn't get a job. No, you see, uh, there's a time I went to for an interview, mm -hmm. and then uh, the interviewer was like, uh, We have the job, but uh, we are not employing drunkards. Oh, dear, yep. 
will you even start explaining to that person what yeah. you are you are you are suffering from because they already remember they at you this and they is a, surely this is you're a coming for an employer. interview staggering mm -hmm. exactly. young man <laughs> exactly and then uh, you see there's no way can uh, you can defend yourself because in a way your lips are discolored what discolors lips changa hmm. or uh, can say <laughs> hmm. yeah. the chief liquor hmm. so, so I, now I, I who has discolored lips i'm also changa drinker <laughs> <laughs> we should look <laughs> we, should, we should check that out check. Uh -huh. <laughs> you won. or i was a changa drinker hmm. oh you are one <laughs> So now so I, you're at this condition where Kasioka has is educated mm -hmm. he has qualified he has a master's degree but he has no job and yet he's been told you are uh, you have multiple sclerosis okay this is a period of denial like you told us yeah it's a period of denial especially denial of that uh, you are a person with disabilities mm -hmm. in a way because uh, you have to use a third leg when you're working you can't walk straight now on a straight line so yeah uh, it's funny mm. it's weird in a way mm. so now uh, denial came in 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 the year 2022 again i denied up to december 2023 actually i i was told to go register as a pwd when they were infusing me with the uh, with solumetrol and i told them ah, why do you register and you are still okay mm. actually if i meet you you say ah, this guy is still okay mm. so in 2023 i don't know i am a i am a living testimony that uh, the heavens have a god mm. because uh, basically 2023 december i applied for registration and in a record uh, one week i got my certificate nobody else in kenya of which i of whom i know mm. has got a certificate in that time because uh you see you've denied 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 and these doctors i even don't know them mm. they are they are strangers to me mm. i remember i took another message Uzi, and then the doctor was remembering me he told me yo you are the ms guy <laughs> and then uh it was like nyindi uh, walevo nye mkunyangi and that's how you got the tagline we are assessing walevo nye mkunyangi so uh that denial led me to a situation whereby i had to register and then uh, as i say the stars aligned the day i got assessed no the day i got my medical report you see there is a medical report and then there is assessment and then you wait for like forever to get your to <laughs> as a, no to get your assessment right assessment report and then you apply again it was that way the day i i did i got my medical report when i was uh, traveling back home i get a message saying now pwds can register online right through a citizen me i don't know there are there, there are many there are many stories uh, which i would not like to be a part of mm. uh, i register online i make an application online and then after the first application i realized because uh, in my in my house i have internet so i realized this is a document i uploaded i uploaded wrongly so i do another application the same night so uh, within three days kumbe they are testing the system Mm. I get my number. So you got your number. I get my number. You are among those people. Now tell us about uh -huh. once you establish the foundation, mm -hmm. the multiple sclerosis foundation. Of course, you now uh, through the doctors and others, you are able to reach out to other people who have MS. Uh, actually, for you to register a foundation, you need to have uh, directors mm. or trustees. Yes. So now we registered our foundation in. Uh, the idea came when I was diagnosed because of the financial constraints. Uh, we, the idea came in 2021 mm. or 22, sorry. But it was not actualized. For you to, uh, I told you my things work in a way which I never, never understand. That's why I'm telling you the heaven has a God. Mm. Uh, 
when we were registering, I just told people, let's come together. We register foundation so that other people can be diagnosed. Mm. We will finance them through, let's say, money which uh, we get from donors. Mm. And donors could be anyone, even Eric is a donor. All well-wishers. Anyone, any well-wisher, mm. in short. Uh, we'll get that money. Then we'll sponsor people to see a neuro. If the neuro requests for an MRI, we sponsor them again to get an MRI. Right. So that is the purpose of the foundation. So far, we have sponsored a couple. We have like five. Mm. Uh, and then they were diagnosed. This year well, alone, I presume? No, 2023. 20 we've only sponsored one person. Okay. We are in March, anyway. Mm. And then uh, you see uh, March is uh, MS Awareness Month. Mm. Mm. And then uh, May 30th will be MS Day. Okay. We are planning to host it in Kenya. So now we register the foundation in Kenya. Uh, normally to register a foundation it takes 120 days mm. which is roughly four months mm. yeah four months but uh, our foundation without knowing anyone without pushing it just feeling a citizen uh, we took uh, a record uh, three weeks to get right. a certificate right we don't know how that happened and that's why I'm saying the events of a God. And then uh, after I got a foundation, the goal is to popularize a mess as much as possible. To make people know. About a mess. How many people do you know, Isaac Asioka? Me who personally. Have MS? Oh, sorry. Uh, personally, I know. Are they 100 mm. so far? Mm. Oh, in the group, in the WhatsApp group, we are like 100. But I can tell you. There are many people with a mess, but they are undiagnosed. So the problem is diagnosis. Mm. Uh, that is the key thing. So what happens to them when they go to the hospital? When you say they are undiagnosed, when somebody goes to the hospital with conditions such as yours, you've told us, mm -hmm. number one, you cannot walk in a straight line. Mm -hmm. You'll find yourself jaywalking and staggering. Mm -hmm. Number two, your speech is slurred. Mm -hmm. Number three, your eyes are red. Always. You, number four, you will have discolored lips mm -hmm. and so on and so forth mm -hmm. when these people go to the hospital what are they told you see in this uh, process of elimination what is it, the first thing that the doctors are eliminating the first thing i think i don't know i don't know the my first thing let me talk about my first thing mm. was arthritis mm. you see if you go to a doctor and then you're complaining you have a problem with your knee mm -hmm. what comes to the mind of the doctor and I'm sorry to say this, but uh, Gen Z doctors, or even our generation doctors, they use Dr. Google a lot. Mm. So you'll go, and then you'll see a doctor typing. Of course, you're not seeing the screen. Yeah. So it's, uh, you are behind the screen. So they'll type, and then uh, what happens when someone is staggering, or when someone has a painful day? They tell you, arthritis. So when they tell you arthritis, ah, you don't have arthritis. Like uh, somewhere I skipped a part of my story. When I was told that I have arthritis, I went, I was given some tembe to go and take. There were not many, there were few. But you see, when you are taking drugs, you should be feeling some better with time. Yeah. But uh, funny enough, I was not feeling better. So me, I went back to the hospital. I told them, it is okay, you are doctors, I am an accountant, me I know debit credit, you you know inject, mm. but uh, the drugs you gave me are not, are not working. There is no change. There is no change. Next to be eliminated. I told, I told them the problem is not in my, in my leg, the problem could be here. So the doctor was very rude to me. He told me, Sasa wuna rambia kazi yetu. And that was the end. I went home. Uh, the next thing to be eliminated, I went to another hospital. I was told I have a problem with my sciatica nerve. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Sciatic nerve, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. medical jargon. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I was saw that. Uh, then I was injected some drugs. Uh, three. So I went today. I was injected. Tomorrow I was injected, and the day after tomorrow, I was injected. So uh, basically, after I went home, the same story. Repeat. There is no change. You are not seeing any change. Mm. And then so we could say. Uh huh. That for many people with MS, undiagnosed with MS, they have gone. They may have gone to a hospital, mm -hmm. diagnosed with one condition. It doesn't improve. Go to another. Uh, another condition is diagnosed, and this is all a cost. It's a cost. So this could be a factor that is discouraging many from pursuing diagnosis. further hospital visits and diagnosis. Mm. So uh, that's where we are coming in now as a foundation. Mm. To support this person to acquire this diagnosis. Actually, as we say, because uh, I was, uh, I can say, uh, am, am I allowed to talk politics? <laughs> yeah. Well, say, you go ahead. Say what you want to say, so uh, I vied mm. as an MCA, mm -hmm. and my political party was not popular in my region, mm. so I never made it. I became number three. Mm. Mm. But when I was campaigning, I could see this is a, a young man. He has the same exact condition, uh, characteristics, or other symptoms which I had. Right. Mm. I could always see. Mm. And then uh, I could tell. They used to say, I used to walk around with water. I hear competitors used to say, We were Jamai, we were Nadunga, Pombe Komajaki, Kilasubi. So uh, I was like, uh, I quit. I lifted my hands. I said, politics with me, I'll never try again. Mm. Because my, my idea is... Uh, Why had you wanted to go into politics? Eh? Why did you want to go into politics? No, I want to, to go into politics because I want to be an agent of change. Okay. Or rather, I want to be a voice which causes uh, people to view things in a certain way. Yes. Because, uh, you see, as a PWD, even though I was not registered, uh, I knew as a PWD, in Kenya, you'll find most people have PWDs in the house, mm. but they are hidden. Mm. They are not brought outside to the world. So now uh, I wanted uh, people to believe also we can do something. Mm. Like uh, you were saying, um, me personally, I... You see, my undergraduate and my master's is just a drop in the ocean. I have 12 years accounting experience. I have CIFA. I have CICT. That is from Kasneb. Mm. And then I have FMVA. My CV is quite voluminous. But now, because you are staggering, you can't. You can't do it. Remember, actually, currently, I don't apply for jobs. Why don't I apply? Mm. Because uh, I fear judgment. Mm. Actually, I've the last job I applied, I think, uh, was in 2023, somewhere in June. And since then, I've never applied for any other job. I gave up. And then uh, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a media person. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a news presenter. That's why I started journalism club with Machakos boys. But up to date, uh, job. So no job. Job, job uh, joint admissions joint board. Admission yes. board yes. Which is now Inakanga, if, which is Kups. Kups. Mm. <laughs> Yo, jinangumu yo. Mm. Uh, wana kaa chini, wana asema, uh, you look like you can do engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Go there. <laughs> You look like you can do a certain course. But, but you know that is not entirely true. <laughs> 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 so uh, actually, you see, we, we, when we were making the applications, yeah. we had four options. When you're selecting your school. Uh, we, we had four options. So my fourth option, not even my fourth, an option which was not there, is what I did. Is what you ended up doing. 
<laughs> now you see you see my point now i, I actually see your point an, op mm. an option which was not even there yeah is what i ended up doing i remember getting the uh, my brother because i registered with my brother's phone he got a message and he told me uh, in kikamba you're going to do bachelor of cooperative business mm. and i was like what is that <laughs> where does it come from mm. actually my fourth choice was to become mm -hmm. that's the one <laughs> yeah that's that's the that's accounting that's course which people know yeah, which that's, that's what that's what is known that's what they gave you yeah becoming cooperatives <laughs> <laughs> yeah they gave me becoming cooperatives actually you get the point because uh, when you went to school uh, we were schooling with no there was a class of bachelor of uh, commerce mm. that's become mm. but now they had uh, always from first year through fourth year they always had uh, less of two units from us because ours have two other cooperative units right. so always they had uh, an extra uh, less we always had an extra uh, but, but the other units were the same the others were the same okay Oh, financial accounting, uh, oh, risk assessment. Now, about your foundation, uh -huh. we're interested in this. When you set it up, mm -hmm. how long did it take you to set it up and how did you get to choose the directors which you said were necessary in f the formation of this foundation? Actually, when we were choosing the directors, the only person who is not uh, a patient mm. Me, I was interested in the patients because, mm. uh, in a way, we we realized I realized that we can't do it without assistance. So the only person who is not a patient is our treasurer because mm. we need them to make sane decisions mm. in a way. So now uh, choosing the directors, uh, the pe the treasurer still has a hand who is a mess diagnosed mm -hmm. so we we narrowed to to a mess to a mess people, MS MS people. Who people are either infected mm. or affected mm. and uh, there's a joke which i carry around uh, ms people in one way or the other it's a joke are hiv carriers <laughs> <laughs> they can never turn positive <laughs> because uh, when a virus comes to them it is kicked out it's rejected immediately yeah but uh one key thing which i've noticed homer the mafua mm. uh common can, cold yeah yo, mm. can uh, in a way make an ms patient sit down yani neza kueka chini homer homer too okay the common one mm. homer too me when i get homer I closed myself in the house for three days without leaving mm. because uh, living is uh, exposing yourself to to contamination mm. in a way. Mm. Back to the yeah. foundation. How do you engage with the yeah. uh, yeah. public? How do you engage with policymakers? Uh, how, how we engage with policymakers? Uh, will we, we hold barazas or uh, multiple sclerosis campaigns? Mm. That is campaigns with the uh, Church in churches, like for example, we held a, a campaign in Esikes and Martins Kao and Dani, where we talked to the congregants about a mess, and we educated them that uh, they should take the people for diagnosis. Mm. Actually, I remember after the talk, I normally don't do the talk because of fluency. Mm. Uh, it's the uh, advisor who, do, who does the talk. Uh, after after the service, more than ten people were coming to me and telling me, "You know my brother, mm -hmm. you know my, you know my relative, you know someone in our family who are not staggered, who are And then I'm like, "Bring them, bring them for testing. They should." And then we also work with neuros, neurologists. Mm. Uh, the, the the name neurologist cells is a mouthful mm. so i avoid it we work with neuros mm. uh, neuros uh, help us to diagnose or to talk to patients mm -hmm. in a way mm. then uh, the other thing is uh, we work with uh, the administration 
Whether that we tell them we want to talk to people regarding multiple sclerosis. Actually, the the what we ride right on with uh, is uh, autoimmune mm -hmm. conditions, and then the other thing we are working with is uh, Ministry of Health. That is under rare diseases Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, rare diseases, it's MS is very rare. Mm. So it's very hard to find uh, someone with a mass, but we, we work with them. We work with the ministry. So, but uh, ideally, doing all these things require resources. And uh, resources will come or come from well wishes. Mm. For us to create an awareness, because MS in Africa, you see the condition is already there. Mm. But MS in Africa at large, we just don't know what this is. You know, you don't know what this is. How can people support the foundation? Uh, people can support the foundation by paying to our pay bill. Mm -hmm. That is uh, 880-100. Then the account number mm. is uh, one marathon. One, 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 one. One, 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 Five one, times. one, one, I love zero. Okay. Yeah, that is our account number. Then uh, you'll get a message. Of course, the ambassador message will mm. come. And then uh, the NCBA bank message will come. We have an account with the NCBA bank. Mm. And then if you want to go to a direct transfer to NCBA, the account number is... Uh, I'm allowed to say it. Mm. Yes. The, our account no, number is... People eight. may not get it. Where can they get the information? Do you have a website? Uh, a Facebook page, a social media page? We have our, a Facebook page. What's a Facebook page called? A Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation. Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation. So or even mine. Uh, or yours. Isaac, Isaac Kasioka. Or Kasioka Mulo. Okay. Mm. Kasioka, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you for... Uh, taking this moment to educate Kenyans and create awareness about multiple sclerosis. Okay. Isaac Asioka is the founder and chairman of the Multiple Sclerosis Kenya Foundation. Support them. Again, the pay bill number is 880100 and for the account, one, five times and ends with a zero. That's 111110. It's 10 a.m. Do have yourselves a lovely weekend. God willing, we'll be back on Monday.